okay uh, good morning to all we will start uh, with the today's session <clears throat> so first uh, we have uh, dr amruta barate she is associate professor in the department of community medicine and she will be taking the session on descriptive statistics Good morning, everyone. So, what did you learn yesterday? How to formulate a compilation presentation and summarization summarization of data which i told by summarizing information descriptive statistics speed up and simplifies the comprehension of a group statistic abhi haphazardly tumne kuch bhi parameters le liye patients ke ya people ke okay in general in population to usko properly tum combine nahi karoge summarize nahi karoge usko groups mein nahi daloge so you can't be able to make out any draw any conclusion or make out any inference for from it okay groups mein kaise divide karoge for example okay age sex composition age composition socio economic status ke hisab se tum classes bana sakte ho 
उससे को रिलेट कर सकते हो तुम्हारा जो भी वेरिएबल है जो भी तुम डिसाइड कर रहे हो ओके रिसर्च क्वेश्चन ना व्हाई देयर इज नेसेसिटी वो मैंने बताया कि रॉ डेटा जो होता है उसका डायरेक्टली हम कुछ इन्फ्लुएंस या कंक्लूजन नहीं निकाल सकते तो वी हैव टू रिड्यूस दिस डेटा यू हैव टू ड्रॉ मीनिंगफुल डिडक्शन एंड इट इज रिक्वायर्ड फॉर इन्फ्लुएंस एंड इट डिपेंड्स ऑन योर वेरिएबल विच वेरिएबल जो भी तुम्हारे रिसर्च क्वेश्चन का वेरिएबल होगा एग्जाम्पल कोई दे सकता है डेटा ऑफ्टेन डायरेक्टली फ्रॉम द इंडिविजुअल्स बाय इंटरव्यूइंग एंड एग्जामिनिंग द रेस्पोंडेंट्स 
सेकेंडरी डेटा इट इज ऑप्टेन फ्रॉम द हॉस्पिटल रिकॉर्ड और सेंसिस तो उसके हिसाब से चेंज होगा Now let us see the difference between quantitative and qualitative data. Quantitative data, it is the measurement data, and it it can be in fractions. Okay, how many are fractions? Me example, weight, height. Okay, these data have a magnitude, and the data is expressed in number with or without units of measurements. For example, height, weight, hemoglobin level, salary, or marks of the students okay qualitative data it is a enumeration data and the data will always be in full digits or numbers yahan pe fractions nahi honge qualitative data and it represents a particular quality data expressed without units of measurements for instance for example male female population tall or short okay wahan pe height measure nahi karna hai tum sirf categorize kar rahe ho tall or short ये डिफरेंस समझ में आ रहा है हाइट इज अ क्वांटिटेटिव टॉल और शॉर्ट कैटेगराइजेशन कर रहे हो देन इट इज क्वालिटेटिव देन क्योर्ड और नॉट क्योर ब्लड ग्रुप्स ओके ये कैटेगरी में आएगा ना अगेन क्वांटिटेटिव डेटा इट इज डिवाइडेड इनटू टू कंटिन्यूस और डिस्क्रीट अगर तुम्हें पॉइंट वाइज लिख के लेना है आई एम नॉट टेलिंग की डिटेल में पॉइंट नीचे के लिखो At least write down the headings, types of data, primary, secondary, quantitative, qualitative. Okay, quantitative, qualitative. Me again, again there are two divisions, continuous and discrete. Continuous मतलब जो measurable है, discrete है, उसको count करना है. Number of children, number of cases. और measure करना है that is continuous. ये difference जान लो. Otherwise आ, आगे जाके कंफ्यूजन होता है आई एम यू टू राइट डाउन क्योंकि ऐसे ही लिख विद इन टू मिनट्स यू कैन कॉलेज वैसे भी साइंटिफिक बोरिंग होता है राइट राइट फ्रॉम एमबीबी Please write down the head. Primary data, secondary data, qualitative, quantitative, quantitative. It is divided into two. Continuous, which is measurable, discrete. We have to count in the terms of numbers. Measure the number. For example, they have given height in centimeters, hemoglobin level, blood pressure, IQ score. Qualitative data again. It is divided into nominal and ordinal scale. Okay. नॉमिनेट मतलब उसको नॉमिनेट ग्रेड वन ग्रेड टू ग्रेड थ्री किसमें आएगा नाउ द वेरिएबल्स द नेम्स इंप्लाय देयर मीनिंग इन स्टैटिस्टिक्स प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ ऑब्जेक्ट्स दैट कैन टेक ऑन डिफरेंट वैल्यूज आर रेफर्ड एज वेरिएबल नाउ तुम्हारे यहाँ पे एग्जांपल दिया है हाइट वेट मार्क्स जेंडर तो तुम्हारे स्टडी में तुम जो वेरिएबल स्टडी करना चाहते हो दैट विल कम यू ओके Variable which is under study. Any doubt? Types of variables: numerical or measurement variable, categorical or attributable variable. Okay. 
ना न्यूमरिकल इट वेरिएबल टू विच नंबर इज असाइंड एज अ क्वांटिटी उसके नाम में ही है न्यूमरिकल और मेजरेबल कैटेगरिकल मतलब कैटेगरी में डिवाइड करना तुम्हारी जो भी टू थ्री कैटेगरीज होंगी अकॉर्डिंग टू योर स्टडी नंबर वन नंबर टू नंबर थ्री कैटेगरी ऐसे तुम उसको नेम कर सकते हो Now, what are the types of categorical variables? It is defined by the classes or categories into which an individual number falls. So, उसके हिसाब से nominal or ordinal or rank. Nominal again, two types के होते हैं dichot dichotomous or binary variable. For example, तुम तुम्हारा data जो prepare करोगे, okay? Microsoft Excel sheet में. So, तुम्हारे एक कोई variable का pass or fail. So, it is dichotomous. binary polygotomous for example types of blood groups okay it is more than two type of hair color religion ordinal again mild moderate severe educational status ranking of officers designation of an employee even socio economic status that will come a ordinal variable types of numerical variables discrete and continuous discrete it reflects a number obtained by counting no decimal places no fractional values only whole numbers matlab discrete aur continuous mein yahi farak hai ki continuous mein fractions aayenge isliye uska naam continuous hai are you getting it usme fractions aayenge lekin isme whole numbers hi aayenge discrete variable नंबर ऑफ पेशेंट्स इजी है समझ में नंबर ऑफ पेशेंट्स कैन दे बी इन फ्रैक्शन नो ओके दैट्स व्हाई इट्स अ डिस्क्रीट वेरिएबल कंटिन्यूस हाइट वेट एज इट कैन बी इन फ्रैक्शन एज का यू कैन से लाइक 25 इयर्स एंड 3 मंथ्स 25 इयर्स एंड 6 मंथ्स ओके सो इट कैन बी आल्सो रिटर्न इन फ्रैक्शन Now, independent and dependent variables. Okay, independent variables. It is manipulated by the researcher or the experimenter under the control of experimenter. That is independent variable. For example, तुम्हारे study का कोई independent variable example दो. कल कुछ examples दिए हैं उसमें से. It is under your control. You can decide that independent variable as any of it. Yes. A. A. Which is after you decide for sure. What do you think? Independent variable. Which is main loss in the after other two such disease? Any non-covered. सगे आए तथे 
Depending variable, it is not under the experimenter's control. Usually, the outcome is measured. Typically, we are interested in measuring the effects of independent variables on dependent variables. मतलब क्या एक एग्जांपल दो इंडिपेंडेंट एंड डिपेंडेंट वेरिएबल कीप योर वॉल ऑन टू योर पॉकेट और बैक हम दो इंडिपेंडेंट डिपेंडेंट वेरिएबल अभी वेट करो क्या आउटकम तो भी देखना वेट करो कि कौन कौन क्या देखना है तुम्हारे डिपेंडेंट According to the weight of the patient, the dose can be changed. So, what does the result question mean? What are the results? Yeah. उसको ठीक से कंपाइल करना है समराइज करना है फॉर एनालिसिस तो उसके लिए एक सर्टन स्टैटिस्टिकल मेथड्स है विच यू हैव ऑल्सो स्टडीड इन योर एमबीबीएस वो ही मैं आज रिपीट कर रही हूँ तो फर्स्ट इज सेंटरिंग टेंडेंसीज फॉर समराइजिंग योर डेटा दे आर कंप्लीटेड टू गिव अ सेंटर अराउंड विच द मेजरमेंट्स इन अ डेटा आर डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड इट इज द सिंगल वैल्यू ऑफ ऑब्जर्वेशन अराउंड विच ऑल द वैल्यूज आर डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड and it is it helps in comparing with other groups okay other studies ya other groups ke sath compare karne ke liye tumhe tumhare data ka ek center find out karna hota hai aur tumhare jo kuch bhi data ka distribution hoga uska ek center point nikalna hai for example mean median mode anybody knows mean kaise calculate karte hain 
average of the observations divided by the number of observations. Okay. Very commonly used mean summation of all the observations divided by number of observations. It can be arithmetic mean, geometric mean, or harmonic mean. But it may get affected by the extreme values. What is the meaning of this? Outlier is like minus side, plus side. Okay? What is it? Extreme values. Extreme values are the same. So, the median and the other observations are the Okay? So, that's why mean is not always ideal for centering constant. Example here pe mean ka hai. summation of observations divided by number of observations. They have given the marks of eight unit test in second MBBS. So average nikala. Median. What is median? It is the middle observation. Okay. Observations jo bhi tumhare paas hai, usko ascending or descending order mein rakhne aur middle observation nikala. Agar even observations say to kaise ye nikalenge median addition of the center to divided by two. okay average of the middle two observation and here this median like mean it is not affected by the extreme values okay jo center ke observations hai ya jo central observation hai usko hi tum centering constant le rahe ho again they have given example ki Diastolic blood pressure of 10 individuals is given. So, here you have even R is 86 divided by 2. Again, okay, 86. Now, we go to similar thing. And decreasing order, mein nikal ke, 515 is your weight in grams median. Mode, most commonly occurring. Okay. Most frequent value. कभी कभी एक मोड होता है कभी कभी दो मोड्स होते हैं ओके तो उसको बोलते हैं बाइमोडल ओके इट इज पॉसिबल फॉर अ डेटा नॉट टू हैव एनी मोड फॉर एग्जांपल पॉपुलर नंबर ऑफ शू साइज शर्ट साइज ओके कॉमन उसमें कॉमनली एक ही नहीं हो सकता देयर इज अ लॉट ऑफ वेरिएशन नाउ ये मीन मीडियन बोर्ड के सेंटरिंग कांस्टेंट्स भी हो गए लेकिन आइडियली डेटा इतना परफेक्ट नहीं होता है कि तुम्हें मेन मीडियम मोड़ी मिले तो आगे जाके ये डिस्पर्शन ऑफ डेटा हमें स्टडी करना है इन टर्म्स ऑफ डेविएशन और डिस्पर्शन इज इट इनफ टू नो द एवरेज नो लाइक वाइज बिकॉज ऑलवेज हमें मेन मीडियम मोड नहीं निकाल सकते हर डेटा के लिए देर इज अ स्प्रेड ऑफ डेटा तो so, इस डेटा में जहां पे डिस्पर्शन ऑफ डेटा ज्यादा है बहुत ज्यादा लार्ज डेटा है उस टाइम हमें देना है लेना है रेंज इंटरपोर्टल रेंज मीन डेविएशन फ्रॉम मीन एंड वेरिएंस और स्टैंडर्ड डेविएशन सबको ये याद है एमबीबीएस का व्हाट इज रेंज इंटरपोर्टल रेंज स्टैंडर्ड डेविएशन और वेरिएंस मीन डेविएशन फ्रॉम द मीन नाउ लेट अस सी व्हाट इज रेंज the difference between minimum and maximum value in your data that will be your range of observations advantage kya hai a quick and easy indicator of dispersion and disadvantage is kya ki it is influenced by extreme values just like the mean and uses only two data points sirf maximum se minimum value tum minus kar rahe ho aur ek dispersion ka range dekh rahe ho example डायस्टोलिक बी पी क्या होगा इसका रेंज बताओ जल्दी ये डायस्टोलिक बीपी के ऑब्जर्वेशन थे वॉट इज द हाइएस्ट नाइंटी फाइव वॉट इज द लोवेस्ट सेवेंटी वन 
It is your range. Sorry, range. Uh, you don't have to subtract. It is from seventy-one to ninety-five. Okay. Then interquartile range. Interquartile range means that your observations are divided in terms of quarters. Okay. So interquartile range is seventy-one to ninety-five. Seventy-one to ninety-five. उसको डिवाइड कितने पार्ट्स में करना है चार पार्ट्स में ओके और उसमें जो तीन पॉइंट्स होंगे उसको क्वार्टर रेंज में कन्वर्ट करना है मतलब क्यू थ्री पॉइंट माइनस क्यू वन पॉइंट तुम्हें बीच में के फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ ऑब्जर्वेशन मिलेंगे दैट इज इंटर क्वार्टर रेंज जस्ट लाइक मीडियन इट इज नॉट अफेक्टेड बाई द एक्सट्रीम वैल्यूज But the disadvantage is it gives only the measure of fifty percent of middle observations. So middle observations are fifty percent. उसको देता interquartile range. सबको समझ में आ रहा है? It is explained in the next slide. Plot करना है तुम्हारे observations, okay? कोई भी variables के observations हैं, वो plot करना है minimum से maximum तक, okay? So middle के fifty percent is your interquartile range q3 minus q1 what this टोटल हंड्रेड परसेंट ऑब्जर्वेशन में तुम्हें सिर्फ फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑब्जर्वेशन कॉमनली ऑपरेट नाउ मेन डेविएशन वॉट इज मेन डेविएशन द मेन डेविएशन इज द एवरेज ऑफ द एब्सोल्यूट इग्नोरिंग द साइन डेविएशन ऑफ द ऑब्जर्वेशन फ्रॉम द अरिथमेटिक नीड मतलब तुम्हारा एक डेटा का एथमेटिक नीम तुम निकालोगे ओके और फिर हर एक ऑब्जर्वेशन को माइनस करोगे मीन से प्योर ऑब्जर्वेशन माइनस मीन ओके तो उसका जो सम आएगा दैट इज मीन डेविएशन एडवांटेज इट इज बेस्ड ऑन द ऑब्जर्वेशन इन द ग्रुप इट इज इजी टू ग्रास द मीनिंग ऑफ द प्रोसीजर बट इट इग्नोर्स द साइन फॉर एग्जाम्पल तुम्हारा एक ऑब्जर्वेशन मीन से कम है तो उसका माइनस करके माइनस साइन में आएगा तो इट इज टुवर्ड्स द अदर साइड अदर डिरेक्शन ओके तो वो साइन कंसिडर नहीं करते हैं मेन डिवेशन एंड इट इज नॉट वाइडली यूज एज अ इट कॉन्ट बी यूज एज अ एडवांटेज मेजर इसलिए आगे जाके हम स्टैंडर्ड वेरिएशन स्टैंडर्ड डिवेशन लेंगे दिस इज द फॉर्मूला मेन डिवेशन इज द समेशन ऑफ एक्स माइनस एक्स बार डिवाइड बाय एन यहाँ पे x क्या है x x x इज द ऑब्जर्वेशन इंडिविजुअल ऑब्जर्वेशन हर एक इंडिविजुअल ऑब्जर्वेशन को तुम x बार दैट इज मीन से तुम्हारे जो डेटा का एथमेटिक मीन है उससे सब सब्ट्रैक्ट करोगे और ये सारे डेविएशन को समेशन करोगे सम अप करोगे डिवाइडेड बाय द नंबर ऑफ ऑब्जर्वेशन दैट विल गिव यू द मीन डेविएशन एम डी इज मीन डेविएशन ये समझ में आ रहा है ना व्हाई आई एम टेकिंग दिस इन डिटेल क्योंकि आगे जाके इसी और फॉर्मूला से बेस्ड यू हैव कोफिशियंट ऑफ वेरियंस एंड स्टैंडर्ड डिविएशन हर एक ऑब्जर्वेशन को मीन से सब्ट्रैक्ट करना है समेशन करना है डिवाइड बाय एन हियर इज एन एग्जांपल टेस्ट मेजरमेंट्स दिए हैं ऑफ इंडिविजुअल ओके हर एक के चेस्ट मेजरमेंट्स दिए हैं मीन निकाला है एंड उसको सब्ट्रैक्ट किया और इस सारे x माइनस मीन x माइनस एक्स बार को समेशन करके डिवाइडेड बाय नंबर ऑफ ऑब्जर्वेशन दो हजार सिक्स समझ में आ रहा है एटी एट पॉइंट फाइव इज द मीन 
वो सिक्स ना सिक्स पेशेंट के सिक्स चेस्ट मेजरमेंट है हर एक का मेन डिविएशन निकाला है बाय सब्ट्रैक्टिंग दैट ऑब्जर्वेशन फ्रॉम इट्स मीन मीन ऑफ दिस डेटा ऑफ सिक्स ऑब्जर्वेशन और फिर वो माइनस करके यहाँ पे साइन कंसिडर नहीं की गई है फॉर समेशन ओनली द नंबर इज समड Now standard deviation. The standard deviation is the square root of the average of the square deviations of the observations from the arith arithmetic mean, and the square of this standard deviation is called as variance. Advantage of the standard deviation is that it is an important measurement of distribution. Bell shape का भी याद है. When you plot on the graph, observations को plot करोगे. I'll see. Uh, we'll see it in the next slide. It is very much suitable for your analysis. कैलकुलेशन ऑफ स्टैंडर्ड डेविएशन क्या किया है सेम एज दैट ऑफ मीन डेविएशन सिर्फ वो मीन डेविएशन को स्क्वायर करना है एक्स माइनस एक्स बार को स्क्वायर करना है उसका स्क्वायर करके उसका प्लस करना है ओके एंड देन यू हैव टू गिव द स्क्वायर रूट समझ में आ रहा है एक्स माइनस मीन x minus mean the whole square and then its summation fir usko square root nikalna hai divide karke now yahan pe formula mein dekh lo agar your number of observations matlab tumhare uh, study mein agar patients less than 30 hai to denominator mein n minus 1 number of observations minus 1 if your sample is more than 30 Then denominator में सिर्फ n आएगा, ओके? Okay? ये डिफरेंस है दोनों फॉर्मूलास में, स्टैंडर्ड डेविएशन, ओके? तो स्टैंडर्ड डेविएशन, इट इज़ द स्क्वेयर रूट ऑफ़ समेशन ऑफ़ स्क्वेयर ऑफ़ द व्हाट? डेविएशन फ्रॉम द मीन डिवाइडेड बाय द नंबर ऑफ़ ऑब्जर्वेशन। मतलब हर एक ऑब्जर्वेशन का डेविएशन कैलक उसको स्क्वायर करना है फिर उसका एडिशन करना है सबका और फिर उसको नंबर ऑफ ऑब्जर्वेशन से डिवाइड करके उसका स्क्वायर रूट निकाल समझ में आ रहा है वन बाय वन स्टेप्स फ्रॉम द टेबल स्टैंडर्ड डिविएशन तो यह द स्टैंडर्ड डिविएशन इज 13.09 नाउ व्हाट इज द रूट मीन स्क्वायर डेविएशन ऐसे भी तुम शॉर्ट फॉर्म में स्टैंडर्ड डेविएशन को बोल सकते रूट मीन स्क्वायर डेविएशन मतलब उल्टा कैसे देखोगे डेविएशन कैलकुलेट करना है स्क्वायर करना है मीन लेना है डिवाइड करके स्क्वायर रूट लेना है ओके रूट मीन स्क्वायर डेविएशन ये मैंने डिफरेंस बताया डिनोमिनेटर का एन कहाँ पे लेना है और एन माइनस वन पे लेना है एन माइनस ग्रुप ए एन माइनस वन डिनोमीटर में कब लेना है ग्रुप ए लेस देन थर्टी ऑब्जर्वेशन आर लेस देन थर्टी ना वॉट आर द यूज ऑफ दिस स्टैंडर्ड डिविएशन इट हेल्प अस टू कंपेयर द वेरिएशन इन टू डेटा सेट विद द सेम यूनिट ऑफ मेजरमेंट अगर तुम्हें तुम्हारे ही यूनिट ऑफ मेजरमेंट जैसी कोई और स्टडी है या एक कोई और डेटा सेट है उसको अगर तुम्हें कंपेयर करना है तो तुम इतने सारे ऑब्जर्वेशन को कैसे इंडिविजुअली कंपेयर करोगे तो सिंपल मेथड क्या है इस डेटा का स्टैंडर्ड डिविएशन निकालो दूसरे डेटा का स्टैंडर्ड डिविएशन निकालो और फिर उन दोनों के स्टैंडर्ड डिविएशन तुम कंपेयर करो समझ में आ रहा है एग्जांपल दिया है यू हैव टू कंपेयर हाइट इन मेल्स वर्सेज हाइट इन फीमेल ओके लॉट ऑफ डिफरेंस देर वुड बी तो दोनों ग्रुप का तुम स्टैंडर्ड डिविएशन निकाल के फिर उसको कंपेयर करो आर यू गेटिंग आर यू ऑल गेटिंग टू कैलकुलेट द कोफिशियंट ऑफ वेरियंस आगे जाके उसका फॉर्मूला देखने वाले हैं हम टू कैलकुलेट द कॉन्फिडेंस लिमिट्स नाउ दिस कॉन्फिडेंस लिमिट्स आई एक्सप्लेन इन द नॉर्मल कर्व वेल शिट कर्व एंड टू डिटरमाइन द कॉमन एंड अनकॉमन ऑब्जर्वेशन ओके 
कॉमन एंड अनकॉमन ऑब्जर्वेशन कैसे डिटरमाइन करेंगे स्टैंडर्ड एविएशन से हाउ कैन मी कि तुम्हारे जो भी सैंपल में फोर्टी या फिफ्टी ऑब्जर्वेशन वो कॉमन है कोई एक उसमें से निकाल दो वो कॉमन है या अनकॉमन है कैसे फाइंड करो जस्ट बाई कैलकुलेटिंग स्टैंडर्ड एविएशन कैसे समझेगा कोई भी एक टेस्ट जैसा कॉम्पेंस का या हिमोग्लोबिन लेवल का कॉमन है या अनकॉमन ऑब्जर्वेशन अकॉर्डिंग टू योर डेटा सिस्टम नॉट अकॉर्डिंग टू द कॉम टू डिटरमाइन कॉमन एंड अनकॉमन स्टैंडर्ड डेविएशन के यूज देखते हैं होम ऑब्जर्वेशन तुम्हारे स्टैंडर्ड डेविएशन के कितने नजदीक या दूर है ये कैलकुलेटिंग अवर डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ना नॉर्मल लोग के लिए राइट तुम्हारे स्टैंडर्ड डेविएशन से वो ऑब्जर्वेशन कितना पास है या कितना दूर है उसके हिसाब से तुम्हें समझेगा वो पर्टिकुलर ऑब्जर्वेशन इट इज कॉमन और अनकॉमन अगर वो काफी डेविएटेड है दूर है तो इट इज अनकॉमन ओके तो जस्ट बाय ऑब्जर्विंग द कैलकुलेटिंग द स्टैंडर्ड डेविएशन एंड ऑब्जर्विंग दैट ऑब्जर्वेशन और वेरिएशन यू कैन गेट द आंसर कॉमन और अनकॉमन Now, what is variance? Square of standard deviation. जो भी तुम standard deviation निकालते हो उसको square कर लो मतलब square root करके निकालते हो standard deviation. तो वो square root sign नहीं लगाई मतलब it is square. So that is your variance. Is d square. Now let us see what is coefficient of variation. Coefficient of variation it is used to compare the variation variation of the two variables in a sample. With different unit of measurements. Now, मैंने बोला था कि तुम्हें दो set of data है. तुम्हारा एक study है, दूसरी का एक study. और for example, uh, हमने example क्या लिया था? Test, test of them. Now, group E, उन्होंने दस observations का एक data set. Group B का दस observations का एक data set है, वो test करता है. तो उसका comparison तो तुमने कैसे किया? By comparing the दोनों ग्रुप से एक ने हाइट मेजर किया एक ने वे ओके तो यहाँ पे यूनिट ऑफ मेजरमेंट अलग है हाइट और वेट में हाइट इज इन सेंटीमीटर वेट इज इन किलोग्राम ओके तो वहां पे यू विल यूज कोफिशियंट ऑफ वेरिएशन वहां पे कितना वेरिएंस है या उसका दोनों का कितना रिलेशन है ये डिसाइड करने के लिए कोफिशियंट ऑफ वेरिएशन यूज करना है स्टैंडर्ड डेविएशन नहीं तो एक सिंपल लाइन लिख लो व्हेन वी आर कंपेयरिंग टू सेट्स ऑफ डेटा एंड द मेजरमेंट यूनिट ऑफ मेजरमेंट इज सेम We we use standard deviation, and the, when the unit of measurement is different, we use coefficient of deviation. Okay, everybody got this? Different units, coefficient of deviation. Coefficient of deviation का ये formula है. Write down this formula: standard deviation divided by mean into hundred. <coughs> डिफरेंट डेटा सेट्स को कंपेयर करने के लिए स्टैंडर्ड डिविशन डिवाइडेड बाई मीन इंटू हंड्रेडिशियंट ऑफ डिविशन यहां तक सबको समझ में आया वे टू यूज स्टैंडर्ड डिविशन वे टू यूज कोफिशियंट ऑफ वेरिएशन ना यूर दे हैव गिवन यू एन एग्जाम्पल इन अ सीरीज ऑफ बॉयज द मीन सिस्टोलिक Blood pressure was 120 and standard deviation was 10. And in the same series, the mean height and standard deviation were 160 and 5 cm respectively. Find which character shows greater variation. So here, the unit of measurement is different. Hai. Okay, one is mean systolic blood pressure and the other is height. Two set of data are. Unit of measurement is different. So here, we don't need to calculate standard deviation. We need to calculate coefficient of variation. Calculate karne. Okay. Yes. 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 Yes.
then you are going to use standard deviation. Then ये याद रखें unit of measurement same है तो standard deviation. Okay? अभी यहाँ पे conclusion क्या निकालोगे? They have shown you calculated the coefficient of variation. मतलब mean systolic uh, sorry blood pressure का उन्होंने 10 लिखा है standard deviation 10 दिया है 10 divided by 120 into 100 उसका कोफिशियंट ऑफ वेरिएशन आया 8.3 परसेंट हाइट का आया 3.1 परसेंट वॉट विल बी योर कंक्लूजन ओके द बीपी इज फाउंड टू बी मोर वेरिएबल कैरेक्टर देन द हाइट ऑफ द इंडिविजुअल और द पेशेंट ओके वॉट दिस Now we'll see what is normal distribution. Okay, normal means usual or typical distribution. Okay, कोई abnormal extreme values नहीं. Usually कोई भी तुम group of data set लोगे, तो उसको अगर plot करोगे graph में, तो you get a normal smooth curve, bell shaped curve. Okay, common observations are outnumbered the uncommon ones, and if frequencies of such characteristics are plotted graphically. and superimposed by continuity line you get a typical curve pattern it was first discovered in 1733 by english mathematician abraham de mor okay it is also called as gaussian distribution curve okay normal curve or gaussian distribution curve okay center mein that is your mean plus राइट right साइड के लिए प्लस वन स्टैंडर्ड डेविएशन लेफ्ट साइड पे माइनस वन स्टैंडर्ड डेविएशन ओके दैट कर्व हैज बीन डिवाइडेड इन अकॉर्डिंग टू द स्टैंडर्ड डेविएशन ऑफ द डेटा ना यहां से तुम्हें क्या दिख रहा है नॉर्मल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन कर्व में ऐसे समझ लो तुम्हारे स्टडी के ऑब्जर्वेशंस के इसको प्लॉट किया है एंड यू हैव गॉट नॉर्मल कर्व तो बीच में सेंटर लाइन है बी ओके What is that? Plus one standard deviation, minus one standard deviation. That is your deviation of the observation. It is below me, yeah, above. Above me, your deviation is that is plus one standard deviation. Mean se kam hai, minus one standard. Deviation. Okay. So, jaise jaise uncommon observation jayenge, wo extreme ko jayenge. Okay. Now, let us see what are the properties of this normal distribution. it is a smooth it is a smooth symmetrical curve it is a bell shaped curve mean median mode coincides okay are the same yahan pe mean median mode center line pe hi aayenge and area under curve is 1 coordinate from peak divided area is in equal halves of 0.5 matlab plus minus okay equally above mean below mean. Area in mean plus or minus one deviation. How many observations will be? Sixty-eight percent of the observations will lie in the central yellow part, plus or minus one deviation. Then the green part, plus minus two standard deviation. The there will be ninety-five percent of your observations. And the red is the extreme part, plus or minus one. So red, the how many will be? Ninety-nine percent observations. okay of your data now they have given an example confidence limits systolic blood pressure follows a normal distribution with a mean of 118 and standard deviation of 15.5 mm of hg find out the 95% and 99% confidence limits okay is data ke so 95% of confidence limits matlab kya mean plus or minus two standard deviation ya three three ke kitne 99 percent hame kitna confidence limits uh, karna hai find out first 95 percent 95 percent observations kitne standard deviation mein aayenge plus or minus two so mean plus or minus two standard deviation 118 plus or minus two into 15.5 that is your 95% confidence limits matlab is data ke 95% of the observations 
they will lie between 87 to 149 systolic blood pressure samajh mein aa raha hai matlab is data ke ya is data set ke patients ke okay if we take an example from a hospital 99% mean plus or minus three standard deviation so it will be from 71.5 to 164 to ek tumhe range milti confidence limit se tumhe रेंज मिलती है तुम्हारे ऑब्जर्वेशन की और तुम्हें पता चलता है कि मैक्सिमम नंबर ऑफ ऑब्जर्वेशन बहुत कॉमनली यूज किया जाता है 95 फाइव परसेंट एट इज टू स्टैंडर्ड नाइनटी फाइव परसेंट ऑफ ऑब्जर्वेशन नाउ द लास्ट पार्ट इज रेट प्रपोर्शन ओके ये सबको पता है हाउ टू कैलकुलेट रेट प्रपोर्शन रेट क्या होता है न्यूमरेटर में जो तुम्हें कैलकुलेट करता है जो वेरिएबल ऑफ इंटरेस्ट डिनोमिनेटर इज द पॉपुलेशन यूजुअली इट डिनोट इन स्पेसिफिक टाइम पीरियड इट मे आल्सो एक्सप्रेस एज अ रेशियो व्हेन द इवेंट इज द पॉपुलेशन एग्जांपल, ट्रू डेथ रेट डेथ इन स्पेसिफाइड पीरियड डिवाइडेड बाई मीडियर पॉपुलेशन इन टू थाउजेंड ये सबको पता है हाउ टू कैलकुलेट रेट True death rate, birth rate, birth rate birth rate में क्या आएगा नंबर ऑफ बर्थ ड्यूरिंग वन ईयर डिवाइडेड बाय मीडियर पॉपुलेशन ऑफ दैट ईयर इन टू थाउजेंड ओके रेशियो स्टैटिस्टिक्स ऑप्टेन आफ्टर डिवाइडिंग द फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ एन इवेंट और कैरेक्टरिस्टिक बाय फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ अनादर इवेंट और कैरेक्टरिस्टिक ओके लेट एस सी इन अ कॉलेज देर आर टू हंड्रेड गर्ल्स एंड फोर हंड्रेड बॉयज Calculate the sex ratio. Okay. So this is an example of ratio. Or death rate, birth rate, kya? It is an example of rate. Similarly, select sex ratio. You have doctor population ratio, doctor nurse ratio, or and bed population ratio. Okay. डिफरेंस बिटवीन रेट रेशो समझ में ओके कोई भी इवेंट तुम कैलकुलेट कर रहे हो इन टर्म्स ऑफ टाइम पीरियड डिवाइडेड बाय नंबर ऑफ पॉपुलेशन इन टू थाउजेंड विल बी अ रेट एंड रेशो टू डिफरेंट इवेंट्स प्रोपोर्शन इज अ रेशियो विच इंडिकेट्स द रिलेशन इन मैग्नीट्यूड ऑफ अ पार्ट ऑफ अ होल मतलब डिफरेंस बिटवीन रेट और प्रपोर्शन में क्या होगा The numerator is always a part of the denominator. Okay, that will be the proportion. यहाँ पे example दिया है. Similar example like sex ratio. वहाँ पे sex ratio calculate किया. यहाँ पे calculate the proportion of girls. तो डिनोमिनेटर क्या आएगा प्रोपोर्शन फाइंड आउट करने है ना कि हाउ मच इज द प्रोपोर्शन ऑफ द गर्ल्स ओके इन अ कॉलेज तो डिनोमिनेटर में तुम दोनों लोगे नंबर ऑफ गर्ल्स प्लस नंबर ऑफ बॉयज एंड हियर नाउ द न्यूमिनेटर बिकम्स अ पार्ट ऑफ द डिनोमिनेटर क्योंकि डिनोमिनेटर में भी गर्ल्स आ गए टेक्स रेशियो में डिनोमिनेटर में गर्ल्स थे नहीं ओके देयर द न्यूमिनेटर वॉज नॉट अ पार्ट ऑफ द डिनोमिनेटर सो इट वॉज अ रेशियो ये डिफरेंस समझ में आ रहा है रेट रेशियो एंड प्रोपोर्शन अब तक जो भी सिखाया मीन्स ऑफ डेरिएशन स्टैंडर्ड डेरिएशन कॉन्फिशन ऑफ डेरिएशन कोई डाउट है ओके नाउ व्हेन यू आर डूइंग योर रिसर्च क्वेश्चन और स्टडी सबसे ज्यादा तुम्हें इसमें क्या इंपॉर्टेंट है तुम्हारे ऑपरेशन का नॉट वर्क स्टैंडर्ड डेरिएशन कैसे कैलकुलेट करना है
Hello, 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 hello. 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 Is it okay? Sabran Aikweta? Hello.
students good morning i am dr nanish gagre associate professor in physiology you know you are a health professional and now a researcher also you have to do your research for your publications for your uh, pg dissertation or thesis and uh, also in future you have to do your research for your phd also okay so while doing the research what precautions you have to take like you are selecting the topic the type of talk, uh, topic this is a uh, design of the uh, study then uh, various um, uh, uh, the how to collect the data how to analyze the data okay then like this in this study the sampling process is also very important because in your study if the sampling is correct then you can save your money your time then it it becomes very easy to collect the data then uh, to analyze the data so sampling method is very important part while you doing your research okay so when you are going for the research you have to always go with the three questions as far as concern with the sampling what are these three questions uh, what is the reference and the study of the population from which you have to select the sample okay so first question is what is the reference and study of the population from which you have to select your units or your sample second question how many people you need for to study that is a sample size and third question is the uh, uh, number the method that is a process of sampling so what method you have to use for the sampling like these three questions are very important before to go for the research okay so in today's session uh, in this session uh, we have to go through this uh, points while the doing the sampling or when you choose the what methods is required for your study because proper sampling method is very much important i just told to save your money and uh, uh, time also so we'll discuss this point under these uh, points under these headings here what is the sampling what is sampling why sampling the purpose then uh, concept importance of the sampling the process of the sampling and then the types of sampling that is a method of the sampling okay so why is the sampling first thing uh, or what is the sampling so very simple it is a process of selecting the study units from a defined population as is called the uh, sampling okay so process of sampling it is a scientific method of selection of the samples okay and you know uh, sample is the study units that represents the whole population so what is a sample and what is a sampling so process of selecting the study units is the sampling and the sample is the study units that represent the whole population the purpose is to draw inference or the conclusion about the population that is a sampling okay why sampling before to start the study why sampling so question is why sampling why so you have to select the proper method of the sampling first thing it save your money your time so uh, then uh, collect a lot of and accurate information from just a few people then the primary goal of the sampling is to create the smaller group then also it ensures the efficiency of the study and the sample size is always smaller than the study population okay so here uh, we'll continue use sampling proper sampling is used for the statistical analysis that is very important point and sampling it helps to analyze the data at the end of your study so there are many methods to obtain the sample we'll go there before to that if you compare the sampling sample with the census you know in census all units of the populations are studied while in sampling you are selecting the particular group of uh, people or uh, elements okay so this is a difference here whole population is studied in the census while 
in sample you are studying the limited people what you are selected that is a difference okay some terminologies regarding the sampling you always use while writing your paper or thesis whatever so what is a population population refer, refers to the entire group of the people okay and then what is a sample so specific group of the population from that population we are taking to the uh, taking specific group for the study okay then what is a study unit elements or subject so it is the single member of the sample or the population so this words you are using that is a elements or you can use our study unit you can use or the subject or the individual or the one member like this words are used and it is a single member from the population or sample what is a sampling unit it is the element or the set of elements used in sampling process okay and uh, what is a sampling frame again this word is very important before to start your study you have to make out the list of the population or the uh, study units so listing of population from which sample is chosen that is called the uh, sampling frame so what is coming don't confuse always while you are studying the this uh, book research methodology book so frame is very important okay then uh, for example people or we can say that the companies or the houses you are going to uh, select for or cities or villages that comes that list of that comes under the uh, sampling frame okay so for example here see the group of population and uh, this is the sample you are, you are selected from the population now we will go there how to select the sample there are the different methods but this so population is a large so many numbers they are in may thousands hundreds or in lakhs while the samples is a less population okay so here this is a what you can see the sampling that is a target population study population and sample size of the sample is less okay concentrate here close your mobile one kar okay now see this is one example suppose you suppose you have selected the study topics so one problem so here you know research problem research populations and study units what are this terminology for example malnutrition related to the breastfeeding that is our research problem your topic okay then what is the study population for this particular example for all children below 24 month of age in a given area so your study population what is study unit so one child below 24 months of age in that given area so example okay so population study unit and problem okay now the sampling process once you have selected your topic depending on your topic how can you proceed for the sampling process first define the population what population you have selected you define it okay then determine the sampling frame so i told what is the sampling frame you for for example the 2000 people from one village you are selected to make out the list okay so second point is make out the list that is your sampling frame then select the sampling methods so for depending on size of the sampling or the people or number or type of study you have to select one particular method okay so for method we will go there and then determine the sample size okay and at the end execute the sampling process okay so these are the steps in the in your sampling process okay here these are the types of the sampling which you have to follow during your study and de uh, depending on your study so here the types are the sampling methods are broadly divided into two groups the probability sampling and non probability sampling so what is a probability sampling it is also called the random sampling okay and non probability sampling is also called the non random sampling okay see the meaning uh, under this probability sampling or the random sampling we have the types it's a simple random sampling systematic sampling stratified sampling cluster sampling multi stage sampling or multi phase sampling okay 
then under the non random sampling the convenience sampling purposive sampling it is also called the judgment sampling under this judgment sampling the extreme case quota sampling homogeneous sampling typical case critical case sampling or uh, snowball or chain sampling okay so you can select one of the this method and you can continue your work now see one by one in short we'll discuss and you can come to the conclusion for your topic which method is suitable okay so here first we'll start with the first group that is a random sampling this so, a group so random sampling sorry uh, so random sampling so first is there is a simple uh, before to go for the simple see the what is a random sampling it involves if we compare these two groups random and non random so what is a random sampling it involves a random selection process okay and what is there every units of the population is given an equal chance to be selected in the sample okay so equal chance is given to the all units okay it is a only method that allows you to draw the valued valued conclusion about the population and it requires a listing of all study units called sampling frame okay so see one by one usme se hum pehle first discuss karenge simple random sampling so depending on your study it is a simplest form of probability sampling here how to go very simple suppose first you you have to prepare the list of all units from the study population okay so prepare the list then decide the sample size you apply the how the sample size is decided yes yourself hmm, student look here okay door number okay so decide the sample size and select the study unit by lottery method so in this simple form of sampling method so you have to uh, choose the sample by the lottery method so one example is given there simple so sorry the sample size is 50 and uh, from the 150 students of the school so what you have to do first make out the list first make the list and uh, given them the numbers 1 to 250 give the numbers then write these numbers on one small pieces small pieces pe number likho okay very simple method and put all this paper of pieces in the boxes box one take one box and uh, uh, set this bo box well and next randomly take 50 papers out of the box and that 50 papers or the name from 50 papers or number that will be your sign so constitute your sample okay so very simple method okay now by lottery methods uh, lottery uh, types you can select the samples okay here if you see the advantage the advantage is it is very simple to perform okay so advantage is very simple to perform and uh, sampling error is easy to measure a disadvantage is need complete list of units and uh, does not always achieve the best representation that the disadvantages okay now the second method that is a systemic sampling so in this method the individuals are chosen at regular interval so first make up the list suppose the list of the 100 students is there there and how can you select the sampling so this is the interval uh, it is a individuals are chosen at the regular interval and for example every fifth every fifth unit or students is selected from the given list okay first number selected randomly from where to start in the list okay so see uh, 100 students are there from where where you have to start that also you select the randomly suppose you have start from the 10 student and after the 10 student every fifth student you have to select as a sample and that is called the systematic sampling method so in this method follow the step so what are the steps here the number uh, number the units of the population then decide the number of the sample size and follow this formula the formula is 
is equal to n by uh, small n and that calculates your interval size so i use the word interval regular interval so kitna interval aana chahiye to you can calculate from your size size of the sample and total number of the population okay so one example is given there here suppose study group uh, it uh, it contains uh, 1200 students from the school and the sample size is 100 okay so how the interval you you can calculate so here uh, it is n by capital n by small n so 1200 divided by the 100 and your calculated interval is 12 so here sample interval is 12 select one random number randomly you select any one number that is a, for example six number and from six number then starting from the six every 12 students will be included in the sample at the unit of, and like this you go up to the 100 students one example is given there here uh, the numbers selected would be like six then 12 gap is there 18 then 12 ka gap hai 30 then like this 32 so this method is called the uh, systematic random sampling okay then next here one more example every third student is selected okay in by random ways from the population so your sample unit now next sampling method is stratified sampling method so what is the difference here in this sampling method population is divided into the subgroups and uh, that is based on the similarity for example the race gender religion ethnic group like this they are divided into the subunits then the predetermined size will be selected randomly from each of these groups so ग्रुप अलग अलग ग्रुप बना और उसमें से यू कैन सिलेक्ट द रैंडमली पहले हमारा एक ही ग्रुप था अब इसमें कैसे सब ग्रुप्स आ गया एंड दैट इज कॉल्ड द स्ट्रेटिफाइड सैंपलिंग हियर द प्रायर इंफॉर्मेशन ऑफ द पॉपुलेशन इज रिक्वायर्ड टू क्रिएट द सब ग्रुप्स ओके हियर एग्जांपल इज गिवन देयर द पॉपुलेशन देन पॉपुलेशन इज डिवाइडेड इनटू द सब ग्रुप्स एंड फ्रॉम द सब ग्रुप्स इज अ रैंडम सिलेक्शन ऑफ द सैंपल सी from every sub groups four units are selected okay so that is called the stratified because in your study you have to mention it is a stratified sampling stratified sampling means like this it is a you know a whole population sub groups then uh, random selection wo jo selection jo mark kiya wo dikh nahi raha wahan to humne randomly selected and from every group four each four Uh, candidates are selected next sampling method is it is called the cluster sampling or the area sampling here in this study uh, you know the areas are selected so sampling you know uh, you know you can see the generally the sampling is difficult or impossible if the study units are scattered over a large area so in this in i say example me kya kar sakte the in this study the instead of selecting the study units the clusters are selected okay and the selection of the cluster is very easy and the clusters are often geographic units for example you can select the districts you can select the villages you can select the clinics you can select the training groups okay so in this way here we are selecting the clusters or the areas and uh, what is the steps under this for example so divide the population into the cluster that is a uh, geographically randomly select the uh, sample clusters and take all units from selected cluster suppose you have selected one village then from that village the village means suppose in uh, amnagar district many villages are there you have selected 10 villages and from all these 10 villages you take all units all people for the your study what is so cluster sampling so take all units from selected clusters so see from this picture you can easily understand these are the clusters on, on depending on the geographical area and here we have selected two clusters so one and two the so sampling unit is not a subject but a group means we have selected clusters and you have taken all three units from that clusters got it 
so this is the clustering sampling okay multiple stage sampling and the multiple phase sampling in multiple stage sampling if the population is very large and the diverse the sampling may be done in two or more stages the different stages you have to use and you know for example it is frequently used in the community based studies in which the peoples are interviewed from the different villages of the different areas okay and frequently it is used in health research system so for the and it is for the multiple stage sampling from this uh, picture you, diagram you can see you choose the country so india for example then to take you have to take the three states then each state uh, you have to select the three uh, districts and from each district you go ahead and select the three villages and like this the multi stage sampling is there okay then uh, here the advantage of this is no complete listing of the population required more feasible approach of the large population and these advantages are several sampling list sampling error is difficult to measure so these are the disadvantages okay next sampling method that is a multi phase sampling and it is also very important because here we are uh, go, going the phase wise the sampling is done in the different phases the part and what is a speciality here the part of the information is collected from the whole sample and the part of the information is collected only from the sub samples are you getting this so suppose you have the different parameters the first parameter is collected from the whole sample but second or next parameters are just collected from the selected people for example you have to do the tuberculosis survey in tuberculosis surveys you know the different test, in tuberculosis different tests are there the so montex uh, this uh, uh, montex test is uh, done in all samples okay so all units or all people so from that sample what you have selected then if the montex test is positive then only the positive individuals are referred to the x ray and if the x ray is positive or uh, they have the similar symptoms and signs only these units are referred for the sputum examination are you getting this this is called the uh, different phases or multi phases so here what is the conclusion the conclusion is that the sputum exam uh, sputum examination is not required to do in all members of the sample only selected uh, in the this is the last group of the we just uh, after the x ray or the same symptoms the so only in that candidate we have we refer them or we have subjected them for the sputum examination okay so here the if you see the importance it is used when the budget is not sufficient for to collect the data from whole sample so depending on your budget if the budget is not so sufficient then you can select this multi stage sampling method okay now the second group of the sampling that is a non random sampling or non probability sampling so what is the difference if you compare with the random sampling here it is a non scientific sampling method that was the uh, scientific sampling method again uh, second difference here every units of the population is not given an equal chance to be selected in the sample there we have given the equal chance to every units here in this group the equal chance is not given to the all units and uh, third the choice depends on the judgment of the researcher okay so here under this we have the two it is divided into two groups the convenient sampling and the purposive uh, sampling or judgment sampling okay so what is a convenient sampling uh, here it is very simple mostly it is used in our initial stage of the uh, study initial stage of the research you are doing first time or it's initial stage the samples are selected as per the convenience and based on the availability of the uh, people or availability of the units okay this method is used when there is a time cost and resources limitation okay so uh, resources limitations are there time limitation is there cost uh, limitations are there then that time this method is very 
convenient. One example is there. Suppose what NGOs and start startups they are doing. Usually they conduct the they follow this method. That is a convenience method. Suppose they have to conduct some particular program, and before to conduct. they have to distribute the pamphlets leaflets they have to distribute so what they will do they will select one mall for example somebody will stand on the entrance of the mall and they will randomly uh, distribute the pamphlets okay like this he will distribute and then he will come to the conclusion what we, what will be the presence or the attendance of the people in the uh, that planned program okay so like this it is a convenient sampling very simple then what is a judgment sampling or the purposive sampling here it is used in qualitative study mainly qualitative study and the quantitative study is there so here it is used in the qualitative sampling method based on the intention or the purpose of the study a purposeful or useful elements are selected from the population so here we select the purposeful or useful elements that means those who are genuinely interested they are selected for the sampling are you getting this so you can fix your topic which sampling is suitable for you okay so see the different examples or different methods on under the judgment sampling the here the extreme case sampling quota uh, sampling homogeneous sampling typical case sampling critical case sampling uh, snowball or chain sampling like this different methods are there okay students see uh, extreme case sampling the participants are unique with the special characteristics selection of the extreme case for this study for example very good or very poor or unusual or special like this selection will be there that is called the extreme case sampling another example the case with outstanding success or notable failure that person you can select for example selection of well nari student help to identify the contributing factors of for the malnutrition okay so particular case is selected that's so a extreme case is selected okay next quota sampling so in this method the you can follow in your clinical study the depending it depends on the pre set standard you have to set your standard that where you have to go for the selection uh, how many uh, units study units will be there like this you have to first fix your uh, uh, preset standard the study units are selected according to the some fixed quota for example selection of the 10 patients from each ward okay so particular with the particular problems there is selection of only 10 percent that is a 10 patient quota is fixed the here the sample and population has same characteristics okay next group is homogeneous sampling again it is very different method here there is a selection of the uh, similar cases are there aim is to collect the specific information about one particular group of the people not whole population one particular group of the population the, the group having similar terms like uh, the age gender background occupation is similar that is for the homogeneous sampling one example is there suppose the suicide cases are more in boys than the girls then to whom you will select the researchers will select boys as a sample and the purpose is to identify what factors may be the contributing to this suicides okay so here you will select the boys only and that is called the homogeneous sampling method okay then typical case sampling here it is useful to study the typical phenomena in the population very typical sample or units you have to select and here to you can describe the typical case in depth for example to describe the typical family in a rural area from the particular country or another example a typical health problems in minors that time you select the typical case okay then last method is that is a snowball sampling and here you know what is a speciality of this sampling what is how it different from the others so here in this type sampling is used when the population is completely unknown or rare population is there so how it is selected it is like the chain methods are there 
तो मार्केटिंग में आपने देखा होगा कि चाइन मेथड इज देयर सो फर्स्ट सब्जेक्ट नॉमिनेट नेक्स्ट सब्जेक्ट विद द सेम कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स इफ यू गॉट द फर्स्ट सब्जेक्ट दैट विल टेल और गिव द इन्फॉर्मेशन अबाउट द नेक्स्ट सब्जेक्ट एंड इन दिस वे यू कैन गो आई विद द हेल्प ऑफ फर्स्ट एलिमेंट other elements are selected and it is called the chain sampling okay commonly used in high sensitive topics like uh, hiv study where the people are not openly discussed and the participate in the survey so in this cases in this type of the study the this this method it helps and that is called the snowball sampling okay thank you break do bole hamara okay we will take a break of 10 minutes here after that we will have a uh, important topic sample uh, sampling uh, determination i think so you should be attentive to so take a break okay have a tea abhi tea aale se ye to thoda fresh hone ke liye theek hai sara ka sun ha sir ha sir dalu
synopsis how many of you are ready with your synopsis very good research question at least um, selection of the population have you decided some topic hmm madam that is the advantage of mass nobody will come to know who is talking you are ready with your topic anyone on this side this table this table no no one is ready okay so once you decide your topic or research question the second uh, thing comes to our mind or the step comes in our mind is calculating the sample size for that particular condition now sample size is not only useful in the, our research but you just look at this um slide so this is the exit poll of the election before election they conduct the exit poll you must have seen india today aaj the they will predict who is going to win whether it is bjp or other parties now after few years there will be no other party there will be only one party but till date there is one party so um, they do the exit polls and these exit polls do you know how the exit polls are conducted anyone knows anyone knows how the exit polls are conducted no very good so exit polls you know they uh, uh, conduct the exit polls throughout the country after the election a particular sample is uh, selected using different sampling method which dagre sir already told different sampling method and from that sample the sample size is calculated first like suppose today the population of india is around 133 crores around 133 crores and from that 133 crores scientifically they will calculate the sample size and it may be 500 or 600 sample only if you go by scientific way 500 or 600 and then they conduct the survey amongst those 500 or 600 people and that will be the representative sample of whole country you know that and that is how the polls are conducted scientific so whatever those 500 or 600 people are saying that will be the final opinion of whole country and that is possible to predict on these things it is possible may in many uh, exit polls they will tell you in the news ki they conducted survey amongst 5000 people or 6000 people that 5000 or 6000 is scientifically calculated sample size okay then only the exit polls are exact otherwise many exit polls whatever number they tell they fail to predict what will be the result so for these exit polls also you need to calculate the sample size using scientific way now you just look at the uh, second example so suppose this is related to our medical field prevalence of diabetes and pre diabetes in india so you all know what is diabetes and pre diabetes the um, title itself says it is very broad topic the author is talking about whole india he want to find out i think everyone knows what is prevalence prevalence is how many people are affected out of all these people all the indian population so the author talks about india do you think it is possible to complete whole 133 crore people to test the people all people is it possible no it is not possible so in this case the sampling method and sample size works so here if you calculate the sample size using the previous data of diabetes and pre diabetes you may get a sample size like 800 or 1000 and if you uh, test those people for diabetes and pre diabetes whatever result you get you can conclude from that result like suppose you got a result diabetes are 10% out of all those 800 or 1000 you can say that in india the prevalence of diabetes is 10% but when this uh, conclusion will be accepted if 
the calculation of sample size is done by scientific way. You cannot just blindly say that I will take 100, I will take 200, or if your guide is saying you take 60 or you take 90 or you take 180, you know these numbers, 60, 90, and 180 boys knows these numbers. Sometimes we don't know guide in which situation he will tell 60, 90, 100. See, the in sample size calculation, it is not a personal opinion. It is always you need to calculate scientific way. Sometimes what happens, we take some disease for our study and it is the rarest condition. We take 50 sample and after three years, we come to know that we can, uh, completed only five or 10 samples because it is the rarest condition. And that 50 was taken just like that because guide said you take 50. So that thing can also happen in the end of the dissertation. So that's why this topic of sample size calculation is very important and it is very easy also. Once you calculate using the formulas or software, no one can uh, uh, question your conclusion. So there are uh, some terminologies we need to discuss before uh, going for the sample size calculation. I will try to wind up in uh, limited time because I know uh, uh, sometimes it becomes very boring to listen. Uh, these kind of topics as they are not used uh, commonly in our practice. So we'll discuss about these terms in short. So first is the statistical inference. Now the example I told you about diabetes and pre-diabetes. Statistical inference is studying a small population out of whole population, then doing the uh, intervention on that population, the small population, and applying those results to whole population again, that is called as drawing a statistical inference. Now, suppose if someone uh, from orthopedic is doing some study on uh, the patients with total knee replacement and he just wa want to find out the outcomes of the procedure which is done in our hospital. And he selected by a sample size calculation, he uh, got 10 samples. So he will study 10 samples Whatever conclusion he will get on 10, it will be applied to whole population of total knee replacement, which is done in Vikhe Party. Maybe it may be 10,000 people who are operated. That conclusion of 10 people will be applicable to all the people who are operated here. So that is called as statistical inference. And for statistical inference, we need to calculate the sample size. So sample size is nothing but the number of individuals which are included in your study using the survey or experiment. And in statistics, we use small n to denote the sample size. Now, why to calculate the sample size? There are uh, three reasons uh, why we need to calculate. The first reason is scientific, ethical reason, and economical reason. Now, the scientific reason is Suppose in a study, after doing a study for one year, you get a negative result. It is not always you will get some positive result. Like suppose if you are studying any surgery technique also, you may get a negative outcome or negative result. And in that case, if your sample size is calculated, that means if your sample size is concrete, calculated, the results will be accepted by everyone even if the result is negative in a next trial if we get a negative result but insufficient sample size that means the sample size is not calculated and we got some results which are negative results that means the procedure is not giving any um, uh, good outcome in that case we may mistakenly conclude that treatment under study made no difference so this is the possibility and you know uh, whatever we are doing in the research we are creating some evidence for the next generation if we are not doing it scientific way we are concluding something we are just saying yeah it is useful without calculation without using the scientific way that will that may land up the patient in some dangers after if someone is using that same treatment for another person then the ethical reasons. 
now uh, you know about ethics word ethics so in medical um, field the ethics is very important now suppose if i am using some drug treatment if i am um, giving some drug to the patient and i want to find out the effect of that drug on the patient the uh, sample size suppose if it is not calculated the less sample size is taken and if we are giving that drug to that less sample size which is not calculated our results will not be accepted first and second thing what we are doing we are doing unethical practice because unnecessary we are exposing that small sample size to the drug because it is not a scientific way of doing the study under size for that we called under size that means calculated is 20 and we are just taking four or five people to study that will be under size and unethical over size study suppose if scientifically i get 10 sample size calculated and if i am taking 100 people and i am giving drug to all 100 people what i am doing i am unnecessarily exposing those 90 people which is not required for my study okay which is again unethical so there can be some complications also in those 90 so that's why it is very important to know the exact sample size now the economical reason suppose if i am using some uh, uh, technique in which we need a drug which is very costlier or any procedure in orthopedic or surgery where we need some material which is very costly so in that case what is happening if the calculated sample size is 10 and if i am taking 100 we are wasting our money on those 90 people we are also wasting our time to recruit those 90 people if my calculated sample size is 10 and if i am taking 5 again i am wasting my time and money on those 5 people because my conclusion will not be accepted by anyone because i have not calculated or i have not followed the scientific way of calculation so these are the three reasons why we should calculate the sample size now to calculate the sample size or to know the sample scientifically there are various way one is nomogram another one is ready made table like the log table you must have used in 11th and 12th the same tables are used here to calculate the sample size then use of formula or computer software so nowadays uh, the nomograms and ready made tables are not used because they are not re reliable as per the research use of formula we should not use or we don't use the formula because nowadays we have stopped using our brain we can go for directly softwares okay so the formulas there also uh, like remembering a formula is very difficult and again there will be problem with the calculations so we can directly use the softwares they are like same like the calculator wherein you just need to put some data and you will get the sample size now to use formula or software you just need some inputs if you put those inputs then only you will get the sample size now for uh, putting the inputs also there are some uh, standardized values which are fixed you can just blindly put those standardized values and from your side we just need one value that i am going to tell you so if you use all those things you will get a scientific sample size which no one can um, question so uh, for calculation you need to know the what type of study whether it is observational study whether it is experimental study cross sectional cross over case study pre and post that you need to put in the software information on the variables what we are going to measure so that information we need to put in the software alpha error confidence level beta error power of test precision of study and hypothesis all these things you should know before calculating the sample size do you know any term out of this out of all these terms hmm? alpha error you know hmm? okay a other term you know hmm? variable variable means what we are going to measure whether pain level quality of life any outcome days duration of stay in the hospital those are outcome measures 
so one by one we'll discuss if your study is cross sectional study or uh, if it is observational study from your side we need only one um, information that is the prevalence from previous studies suppose if i want to find out the complication of uh, any one surgery i need to know what is the prevalence of that particular complication in other countries or other states if we get that data you can just put that data in the formula or the software you will get the uh, sample size if that data is not available you can just conduct a pilot study on 10 or 15 people you find out out of these 10 or 15 people how many are coming with that complication and that percentage you can use for the calculation yes ma'am yeah see normally it should be 10% of the total sample size uh, which is required for the actual study suppose i decided to take the 100 population the sample size we can take 10 uh, from that that is 10% and 10 is the maximum for the pilot study if you read the article 10 is sufficient to conduct the pilot study so you can just observe 10 people and you find out the reading and just put it in the software then if you are doing the clinical trial or experimental study you need mean and standard deviation from the pilot study or from the previous study which you need to put in the software if it is case control study you need the odds ratio. So we'll just discuss one by one. Now, alpha error. See, uh, you don't need to remember the definition. What is alpha error? What is beta error? Just remember the values, the standard values. Those values you can directly use for your calculation. So alpha error, you heard about the hypothesis. Everyone knows null hypothesis and alternate hypothesis. Hmm. So, hypothesis, we project it in the beginning only, in the synopsis. Either the uh, intervention will be useful or it will not be useful. This two way you, we should state the hypothesis. And any one probability will be there afterwards. Either it will be useful or not useful based on the results. So, alpha error is probability of rejecting a true null hypothesis when it is true. That means we reject the true null hypothesis instead of accepting it, then the alpha or type 1 error can occur. And here you can use the standard value of 5 to 10 percent. That means 5 to 10 percent of error can be accepted while uh, doing the type 1 error. So, uh, in the formula, you can either put 5 or 10%. These are the standard values. Okay. So, this is uh, the example of null hypothesis. So, suppose this story, you know, Wolf and Shepherd. I think everyone heard of this story. Now, in this story, suppose your uh, null hypothesis is Wolf is not present. What is type 1 error in this case then? Probability of rejecting true null hypothesis when it is not true. That is type 1 error. That means here the shepherd thinks Wolf is present. He is not rejecting the null hypothesis. So that is the uh, type 1 error this um, uh, in this story. And you take the example of technique, like technique A cures the disease B. Here the type 1 error can be technique A cures the disease B, but it is rejected as a false. So this can be sometimes dangerous. So that's why the type 1 error is always said between 5 to 10, 5 or 10, not more than that. Then uh, type 2 error or beta error, it is failing to reject the null hypothesis when it should be rejected. When you fail to reject, when actually it should be rejected, then it is type 2 error. And for this, the standard values are 0 0.1 or 0 
in some software uh, softwares they ask the percentage so in that case the value can be 10 or 20 percent okay so these are the standard values so again the same example here the type one error in the first will be shepherd thinks wolf is not present so if the type one error is more and in technique a qs technique b here the type two error can be technique a does not care the disease b but is accepted as a true so you just think uh, if the error is more how harmful it can be to the patient so that's why you should uh, set the type 2 error between 10 to 20 percent only so that much error can be accepted so this is uh, the example if the type 1 and type 2 error is more what can happen in the research now the confidence level this is another term so confidence level is the probability that estimate of a population parameter is within the certain limits and uh, here the confidence uh, level will tell you how sure you can be in accepting or rejecting the true null hypothesis and the standard values if you set the type 1 error at 5% the confidence level is automatically 95% so 100 minus type 1 error if you set the alpha that is type 1 error at 10 percent your confidence level will be 90 percent so automatically it will come in the software once you set your type 1 and type 2 type 1 error so if the confidence level is more if you set it more like 95 percent your sample size will be more you can look at this table here the sample uh, the confidence level is 99 percent you can see the sample size 66,558. Uh, Once you go down towards the 90%, the sample size is coming down. So higher the confidence level, higher will be the sample size. Then power of test. So it is a probability of correctly rejecting a false null hypothesis. This depends on your beta error or type 2 error. If the beta error is 10%, the power of study will be 90%. And if the beta error is 20%, your power of study will be 80%. So automatically it will come in the formula. So these are the standard values for the power. Again, if the power of test is higher, your sample size will be more. You can look at here, when the power on this side, it is going towards 90, your sample size here it is going around 70, 75. When it is coming down, the sample size n will come down. Then there are z values. We will not go in details of definition, but again, z values depends on the hypothesis, whether it is two sided or one sided hypothesis. Hypothesis lecture is done. Hmm? Done. So, uh, Two, there are two types of hypothesis, one-sided or two-sided. Depending on the hypothesis, the Z value will differ. If you are setting uh, the confidence level at 95% and if it is two-sided hypothesis, the Z value will be 1.96. Again, it will be automatically set once you enter your confidence level and type of hypothesis. Okay. So these are the standard values which you don't need to remember. Understood? So automatically it will come in the formula. Then do you know about the precision and accuracy? Hmm? What is accuracy and what is precision? Hmm? What is, yeah? Hmm? So suppose, uh, see, the systolic blood pressure, we say it is 120. Okay. Now suppose we measure the blood pressure of all 28 people, and this is from around 190, 120, 180, 120, 90, then the accuracy is present in the problem. But if it comes around 112, 130, 112, 130, the study is precise, but it is not accurate because the standard value is not precise. It's away from standard value, but whole 
calculation. Blood pressure is coming around one millimeter, hundred ten, hundred eleven, hundred ten. So it is precise, but not accurate. And if for all the population it is coming hundred eighteen, hundred twenty, then it is precise also and accurate also. So if we set the precision more, more that is, if you are thinking of more precise study, then the sample size will be more. You can see here on this size, these are the precision values. So now 0 0.01 is the precision, highest precision. You can look at the sample size. It is coming 66,000. If you keep the less precision, that is at 0 0.1, the sample size is coming down. Okay, so precision is also important uh, in the research study. Now, this is about one-sided and two-sided hypothesis. We will not go in detail because already it was done. So if the two-sided hypothesis is there, you just remember that the sample size for two-sided hypothesis will be more. Now that is all about the theory part. So now we'll discuss about some examples. In a rural area, we want to estimate the prevalence of low back pain. How much population we need for my study? So in this example, what all values we need to put in the software estimated prevalence. So only one value we need from our side. And from where we are going to get the estimated prevalence? Hmm? Previous literature. And if the literature is not available, then you need to conduct a small pilot study. And that percentage you just put in the software. This confidence level we are going to keep at 95%, which is a standard value. Once the confidence level is 95% and one-sided hypothesis is there, Z value will be 1.96. And absolute precision, I am keeping it at 5%. This is again the standard value. So only one value we are using from our side. Using the formula, the sample size will be 246. So how many people we need to study in the um, research? only 246 to find out the prevalence of whole district or whole state. So whatever result we are going to get from 246 will be applicable to the whole population. Then this is another example of two techniques wherein uh, they want to compare the effectiveness of two techniques. This is the experimental randomized control trial. So in this, they have given some values like uh, SD is given, standard deviation is given and mean difference is given. Also, they mentioned about dropout rate because when you're doing some intervention, it will be long term. Like patient need to come for 10 days, 15 days or two or three weeks. There will be dropout. So you need to consider 10% dropout in the beginning itself. That means 10% extra population you need to add because if they live in between, it will become undersized study. So in this example, they have given uh, the values. So we are going to use level of significance at 5%, power at 80%. These are standard values, which already we studied. And type of study, it is two-sided hypothesis in this example. So once you calculate the sample size using all these uh, parameters, the sample size will be 90 for each group. Now there are two groups. So one group 90, another group 90. So it will become 180. But we need to add attrition. That is 10% more population because there will be dropout. The patients will live in between. So 10% if we add in this population, so it will become 100 in one uh, group and 100 in another. So even if those 10 people live in between, or if even if they don't complete the study, we will not land up in undersized study and our results will be accepted, okay? So this dropout is added only if a long-term intervention is used. So that is all about uh, the sample size calculation. Uh, tomorrow, again, there is one more lecture on using the softwares for sample size. I'm going to show you how to use the software and how to make it more easier for the calculation. So when you're reporting this sample size, 
uh, you need to give justification what parameters you use what software you use for the study whether you conducted the pilot study then uh, assumptions about the distribution that is normal distribution i think those lectures are remaining and what software is used that you need to mention in appropriate wordings or reporting sometimes the authors will report a previous study in this area recruited 150 and found highly significant and that's why i'm using 150 population this will happen like five years back someone has done same study he used 100 people and i am also going to use 100 only that is wrong you cannot use same sample size because the scenario is changing settings are changing and methods are also changing then sample size are not provided because there is no prior information so he, i i was saying about literature take it from previous literature if literature is not available or data is not available uh, from previous study you just go for pilot study but don't say that the data is not available number decided based on available patients alone so in this case sometimes you need to extend or sometimes you need to do the multi centric study if the patients are not available here you can go to another center to complete the sample then failure to achieve the required sample size this will happen in the end after calculation also sometimes you will land up in the undersized study so in that case the reasons can be patient refusal to consent if the patient is not convinced properly for the procedure or intervention in those cases we may land up in the undersized study bad time for the study have you observed in our hospital there is up and downs in the patient flow see when there is rainy season complete rainy season is going on the number of patients are coming down now after rainy season you see the number will come up because um, the, they will finish with all the farming all those works at the home and then the number so the season is also important when you are going to recruit the patients then adverse media publicity media publicity we don't do it but in some cases we need to tell all the people that we are doing this study you need to uh, come for the research lack of genuine commitment to the project this is very important and we know and uh, we have seen last 10 15 years how the students are committed uh, to the project and too many projects attempting to do the study using same subject that means in ortho five people are doing the study on low back pain only so they are not going to get the sample uh, for everyone so you need to select the different different conditions so take home message is sample size justification is essential part of any research ic proposal calculating the appropriate sample size is as simple as plugging the numbers into formula and sample size should be estimated early in the design phase itself like when you are doing the synopsis you, you cannot change the sample size once your synopsis is final so that is the take home message these are the softwares which we are going to use and i'm going to demonstrate it tomorrow so that is all from my side any questions from your side hmm? no question so there are only two possibilities either you understood everything or not understood anything okay <laughs> madam uh, second you with the mask can you just get up what is your name and your department anesthesia who is your guide ma'am your guide good okay so you are continuously discussing something as if you are not interested in the classes hmm what are you discussing about patients काम असलं तिला जाऊ दे ना शी इज डिस्टर्बिंग अदर पीपल ऑल्सो ती खूप बिझी जर असली तर लेटर गो दोज हु आर नॉट इंटरेस्टेड ना बिकॉज व्हॉट इज हॅपनिंग इफ समन इज टॉकिंग इन बिटवीन यू कॅन स्लीप बट डोंट टॉक इन बिटवीन सो इफ आय वॉन्ट टू टेल समथिंग ऑर एनी वन वॉन्ट टू से समथिंग वी आर ऑल्सो गेटिंग डिस्टर्ब अँड इफ यू वॉन्ट टू गो यू जस्ट गो यू विल गेट द सर्टिफिकेट Hmm? 
Thank you very much. So tomorrow we'll meet again with the software. So if possible, get the laptop or otherwise on the mobile also, uh, I can demonstrate the software. Thank you. Thank you, thank you sir, uh, for uh, uh, making such a difficult and most important topic in doing this research, making it understandable for all our students. Thank you, sir. Very good morning to all of you once again. Okay, so since uh, morning you are having three sessions, uh, descriptive statistics, then sampling methods and sample size. Okay, we are going to have the activity on all these three. I think the topic uh, you have selected, I hope you have revised your research question, hypothesis and uh, objectives. Okay, so write it on one page. Okay, after this session is over and hand it over to me. Okay, your research question, corrected research question, hypothesis and objectives. Then we will discuss further on these uh, next topics. <clears throat> okay, so we'll start. So the first session uh, today morning was, what was it? Yes. Today morning, the first session was, Descriptive statistics, right? So, uh, what you understood? What is the gist of that uh, uh, session? <clears throat> what do you do with this descriptive statistics? What What is the basic purpose? Compile. Comparison also we can do with the descriptive statistics. Yes. Again, the same thing. Should I repeat what Anapsa said? So descriptive statistics, that means it describes, okay? Like 
if i have to describe the height of uh, all of you are sitting here okay now one person will have say 150 cm 167 cm 172 cm but i have to just describe in one uh, sentence then i will just say the average height of the people sitting here okay that is how i describe the uh, uh, sample that is uh, for our study okay so describing the uh, uh, data so that is descriptive statistics okay the second part is inferential statistic okay so it is inferential so what is the meaning of inference dictionary meaning of inference inference inferential is de uh, derived from inference right so what is the meaning of inference conclusion right so drawing some conclusion from the data that we have collected okay so <clears throat> there are two types of statistics descriptive statistics and inferential statistics right descriptive statistics we have learned in the morning session so it just summarizes the data height of this 30 people sitting here i will just summarize average height is this and another one i can use is standard deviation right standard deviation of the uh, people madam madam please you as an obsessed you can just leave yes i will discuss with dean sir then you can resume in the afternoon session if you don't want to pay the attention so descriptive statistics it just summarizes so what are the data that we have collected we just have to summarize and present one is mean if it is a quantitative data and second is standard deviation like how variable the height of the people that 30 people that you are sitting here okay so that is descriptive statistics the second one is inferential statistics now here as we said we have to draw some conclusions from the data okay so we have to either estimate something either we have to predict something or make forecasts or whatever the data that we have collected okay we have to make some generalized statement okay so height i have collected okay this is the height average height so i can say that all the pg students who are admitted in the first year they have the average height of this much so this is a general statement i am making so whatever the data i have to collect i have to make some generalization make some general statement from that we have to derive something from the data that we have collected so that is inferential statistics so descriptive in other words it is concerned with just describing the population while inferential is drawing the conclusion about the population on the basis of sample analysis and observation so from the population obviously we are as uh, you all learn in the sampling methods we are not collecting all the people in this you know we are not including all the people in our study we are just collecting sample so from that sample we have to analyze the data whatever the data that we are collecting from that uh, from the uh, sample analyze based on the observations we have to draw some conclusion about the entire population okay though we are selecting only few people to participate in the study we have to make a statement which is applicable for the entire population right by drawing the conclusion from the data that we are collecting so inference is basically drawing the conclusions from the data and inferential statistics is drawing of conclusions from quantitative or qualitative information using the methods of statistics to describe and arrange the data and to test suitable hypotheses so that is inferential statistics so either it will be a quantitative data or qualitative data from that we have to draw the conclusions by applying some statistical tests are you aware of some statistical tests have you heard of some statistical tests yes chi square test then petty test and petty test so likewise we have to apply some statistical tests to test the hypothesis okay whatever the hypothesis we have to testing of the hypothesis is done by this statistical test and from that we have to draw the conclusion because the data this data 
do not come with their own interpretation we have to draw the interpretation from the data that we have collected okay so this is like one example okay and this uh, drawing of interpretation from the data is done by reasoning okay see this reasoning is of two types one is deductive reasoning and one is inductive reasoning we will see what this is now this is one sentence okay all americans believe in democracy okay this is a general statement right now if i say this person is an american so what conclusion you will draw from this about that person particular person yes one person at a time yes that means this person also believes in democracy right so that is what we are deducting from this general statement all americans believe in democracy and this person is an american so we can say that this person believes in democracy so from generalized statement we are applying this generalized statement to a particular people so we are going from general to specific to this specific person right even our in medical field we do the same thing from general to specific like this is the one example if you know the amount of medication that can be safely given per kilogram of body weight is known okay then we can calculate how much amount of that medication is to be given for the patient being 50 kg okay in pediatrics generally we use this uh, depending on the weight of the patient we know that paracetamol has to be given a dose is 10 mg per kg of body weight so depending on the weight of the patient we calculate the dose so we know the general formula right paracetamol 10 mg per kg of body weight so suppose a patient a child comes with a weight of say 12 kg then accordingly we can calculate the weight of paracetamol for that particular patient and we prescribe accordingly so from the general uh, formula we are coming to the specific formula right from general to specific that is called as deductive reasoning okay so this is one type of reasoning deductive reasoning that is from general to specific okay so it proceeds from general that is a formula which is given to the specific that is the patient that we have okay so understood this deductive reasoning from general to specific inductive reasoning is exactly the opposite of this that means it will be from specific to generalized and that is what statistics is because we are collecting the data from few people right by sampling method we are just selecting few people to participate in our study so these are the specific people who are participating in our study we are collecting the data from them then we will apply some statistical test and then we will make some generalized statement okay so we are from specific we are going general okay so this is from specific i will give you one example specific to the general this is called as inductive reasoning we know that uh, systolic blood pressure it increases with age right this is a general statement but how we have derived that we included few people to participate in our study okay we followed them up we seen we measured their blood pressure when they were young when they were children when they were young when they become adult so we followed and we measured their blood pressures right systolic blood pressure so only we will concern with systolic blood pressure so we measured their blood pressure and then we followed we conducted this study for few subjects and then we made a generalized statement we concluded from the data that we have collected that with the age blood pressure also increases now this is a general statement we are making we are making some we are drawing some conclusion that yes with age the blood pressure also increases that is what we have to do with the help of these statistics from the specific data that we are collecting we have to draw some conclusion and we have to make some generalized statement okay understood this what is inductive and what is deductive reasoning deductive is from general to specific while inductive reasoning is from specific that is from the data to the general that is we have to develop some formula we have or we have to conclude something or we have to make some generalized statement okay
Now what is this? Something related to mathematics, geometry, yeah? linear equation. Okay. I know many of you don't like maths. So I have left the maths in 12th or as some in 10th itself. Right? So this is an equation of simple line. Okay. Uh, a straight line. Equation in geometry. This is an equation for a straight line. Okay. In statistics also, this is an equation for simple regression analysis. Okay, the equation is same. Now here, B is constant, which is also called as Y intercept. M and B are constant. So B is constant, which is called as Y intercept. That means it is the value of Y when X is zero. Okay, then M is also constant, which is called as slope, which denotes the change in the value of y per unit increase in the value of x. Okay, so these two are constant. Generally, like I hope you remember at least whenever some some in mathematics some equation is given, you have to ask like find x. It's not there, which they are and you have to ask find x or find y. So here m and b are known okay and either x or b, y you have to find out so that is mathematics statistics or biostatistics again is exactly opposite of mathematics here we know what is x and y and we have to find out these constants m and b x and y are our variables and that information, that data, we are collecting from the samples which are there for our study. Age and blood pressure. So these are the two variables. So we are collecting the data. Say so suppose uh, Y is blood pressure and X is age. So we know what is Y and what is X. And from the data, like from the data that we are collecting from the sample, we are developing this equation. Okay, understood. So y and x are known in biostatistics and we have to find the constant and then we have to develop this equation. Like how and what proportion? It is not like that age, like x al bada to blood pressure bhi x se bada jayega. It is never like that, right? So there is, there has to be some equation in what proportion it will increase. So from the data that we are collecting regarding the age and the blood pressure, in what proportion they will increase. So from the data that we are collecting, we have to develop the, this equation to find out what will be the blood pressure of the patient when the age is known so based on these two constants. So mathematics and biostatistics are exactly the opposite. What is known in mathematics is not known in biostatistics. Okay, We know the variables, we know the x and y, and we have to find out the m and b and develop a general statement. This is a general statement so that it will be useful for others in future. So whatever is the age, uh, whatever is the age of the patient, we can know what will be the normal blood pressure for that patient. Okay, so this is biostatistics and mathematics, the basic difference. Now, inferential statistics, there are of two types, estimation and hypothesis testing. Estimation is guessing the value of the parameter at a given point, or over a period of time, okay, which is not commonly used. What we generally use in the inferential statistic is test the hypothesis. That is making yes, no decision about the parameter. So hypothesis testing, okay. What is hypothesis? Again, it is an assumption, right? So it is a claim, a statement, or just an assumption about some parameters. Okay, like you made the hypothesis that there is no difference. So it is just an assumption. We are just assuming that there is no difference. That is null hypothesis, right? Hypothesis testing is to test whether that statement is true or not, making yes or no decision, whether the hypothesis that we have stated, whether it is true or not. So making uh, the yes or no decision about the 
hypothesis that were uh, put forward. Now, this is one sentence. Okay, how we test this hypothesis? Everyone who lives to the age of ninety or more is a non-smoker. This is a sentence. Now I have to prove this. What should I do? क्या करना पड़ेगा अगर आई टू प्रूव कि एवरी वन हु लिवस टू द एज ऑफ नाइनटी और मोर इज अ नॉन स्मोकर यस बट रीड द सेंटेंस एंड इच वर्ड केयरफुली एवरी वन हु लिवस टू द एज ऑफ नाइनटी और मोर इज अ नॉन स्मोकर इफ आई टू प्रूव दिस स्टेटमेंट क्या करना पड़ेगा सैंपल विल बी Everyone who is above the age of ninety means, जो भी ninety and above है, आप तो सबको पकड़ना पड़ेगा, सबको पूछना पड़ेगा वैसे ही smoker or non-smoker, okay? So to prove this, I have to find. अगर मेरे को ये disprove करना है, तो क्या करना पड़ेगा? हाँ? You have to disprove this sentence. Everyone who lives to the age of ninety or more is a non-smoker. I have to disprove this statement. Again, read the sentence carefully. Each word. Everyone who is who lives to the age of ninety, and I have to disprove this statement. Yes. Yes, you are saying something. Yeah, but smoker disprove करना है this statement prove करने के लिए like I have to find everyone and to disprove yes even if I find one person who is above age of ninety and above and he is a smoker अगर मुझे एक भी मिल गया that means this statement is disproved right to disprove this hypothesis we have to find just one person the statement what is the statement everyone who lives to the age of 90 or more is a smoker agar mujhe disprove karna hai so i just have to find one person who is a smoker and who lives above the age of 90 years this is the reason so what we conclude from this example it is disprove karna is easy prove karna is easy डिस्प्रूव करना इजी है राइट एंड राइट डिस्प्रूव करना इजी है बिकॉज यू टू जस्ट फाइंड वन पर्सन की हु इज स्मोकर एंड दैट्स वाई इट इज इजियर टू फाइंड द एविडेंस अगेंस्ट अ हाइपोथिस एंड प्रूव दैट इट इज करेक्ट और इसी वजह से हम नल हाइपोथिस करते हैं क्यों हम अल्टरनेट हाइपोथिस नहीं करते नल हाइपोथिस नो डिफरेंस और हमको वो डिस्प्रूव करना है That means we have to see if there is difference. Understood why we put the null hypothesis because we have to disprove that. समझ में आया null hypothesis का concept, okay? और ये लगाने test लगाने के बाद हमें क्या मिलता है p value. Everyone is aware of this p value. Have you heard of this p value? क्या पता है p value के बारे में? जो भी आपको पता है वो बताओ यस फ्रॉम दिस ग्रुप व्हाट डू यू नो अबाउट पी वैल्यू पी वैल्यू ऑफ जीरो पॉइंट जीरो फाइव तो सिग्निफिकेंट और नॉट मीन कम होना चाहिए ज्यादा होना चाहिए व्हाट इफ पी वैल्यू इज लेस देन पॉइंट जीरो फाइव इट इज सिग्निफिकेंट क्यों What is P? P stands for probability. And this P value, when do we uh, we obtain this P value? P value comes means here when we apply some statistical test. Okay, from that we get the P value. So it is obtained from calculating one of the standard 
statistical test koi bhi statistical test aap apply karo you will get the p value and from that we judge whether the uh, it is significant or not significant so this is this p value what are the value that we get it is the probability that observed this difference might have occurred by chance jo value milti hai hame that is the probability ki jo bhi difference aaya hai that is because of chance agar wo value kam hai if that value is less that is less than 0.05 we'll see why this 0.05 again but if it is less that means the probability that the difference is because of chance okay and that means the difference is the actual less hai matlab there are very less chance that that dif uh, difference has occurred because of chance that means it is the actual difference p value less hai probability ye hai ki that difference has occurred by chance is very less so if p value is less than 0.05 that means the difference is actual and that means that's why we call it as a significant significant difference understood so whenever we have to test this hypothesis there are steps we have to first develop the null hypothesis or alternative hypothesis then establish the alpha level perform a statistical test then compare the p value with the alpha level and reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis so we'll see this first we have to develop the null or alternative hypothesis okay this i think we have already discussed so null hypothesis means there is no real difference between the means if it is a quantitative data and proportions if it is a qualitative data of the groups being compared so null hypothesis means there is no difference okay or no association between the two continuous variables if two variables are continuous variables i hope you are remembering from the yesterday's lecture what are the different types of variables what are the four types of variables that you have learned four types of variables nominal ordinal interval and ratio okay so uh, ratio is continuous variable so if both variables are continuous then there is no real association or no difference so that is null hypothesis while the alternative hypothesis means there is difference between the groups that we are comparing right so null hypothesis is represented by h with the suffix 0 h0 and alternate either h a or h1 null hypothesis is this is one example the mean weight of the males and females are not different okay so that is null hypothesis no difference while well, alternative hypothesis the mean weight of the males and females are different so that is alternative exactly the opposite so hypothesis is the probability of p probability p of the null hypothesis being correct null hypothesis correct hai iske kya chances hai that we assess with the help of statistical what is the probability that null hypothesis is correct that is assessed by applying some statistical test so if that probability is very low then we reject the null hypothesis probability that the null hypothesis is correct if that probability is very less that null hypothesis is correct that means we reject the null hypothesis and we accept the alternate hypothesis that means there is difference and if that this probability p is very high that means we accept the null hypothesis okay we cannot reject it and we have to reject the alternative hypothesis so again in other words if p if you like remove all this if p value is too low then you have to reject the null hypothesis right that means if p, p value is less than 0.05 you reject the null hypothesis what is the null hypothesis there is no difference so you reject that that means you accept the alternate what is the alternate hypothesis there is significant difference that means if p value is less than 0.05 that means there is significant difference that's why we say if p value is less than 0.05 it is significant okay 
then second is we have to establish the alpha level okay in the previous lecture of sample size also there was mention of this alpha level what is this alpha level it is the highest risk of making a false positive error that the investigator is willing to accept how much error you are willing to accept kitna error hoga that you have to decide by default this is 5% okay like if do not if you do not set by yourself you are ready to accept 5% of the false positive error okay 5% means 5 divided by 100 that is 0.05 and that's why we say that p value less than 0.05 or sometimes you can set it up to 1% also so it will be p less than then 0.01 will be significant okay so this alpha level you have to set by default it is 5% that means how much error that you are ready to accept in your study okay so investigator is willing to run a 5% risk but not more than that of being in error while rejecting the null hypothesis so you are just having 5% risk you are just willing to have 5% risk is ke zyada nahi okay that's why p less than 0.05 is considered as significant if you set the alpha level at 1% then you have to see that p less than 0.01 is only will be only considered as significant okay generally 5% hi rehta hai usse zyada mat jao 10% so it has of no use you can go down less than 5% but not more than then you have to perform a suitable statistical test depending on that we will see what statistical test should be applied for what different types of data okay so this p value is obtained by the statistical test which gives the probability that the observed result is by chance rather than by the true effect and when this probability of an outcome is due to chance is remote the null hypothesis is rejected again the same thing if we get the p value less than 0.05 that means you have to reject the null hypothesis and this p value it states specifically just how remote that probability is probability of outcome being due to chance so from that just remember p value less than 0.05 you have to recheck the null hypothesis that means the, there is significant difference then you have to compare this p value with the alpha by default alpha is set at 5% or 0.05 okay so you have to compare whether it is more than that or less than that and based on that you reject or fail to generally accept the null hypothesis that word is not used in statistical terms it is either rejecting or fail to reject the null hypothesis so if p value is greater than the alpha level that is p value is more than 0.05 we fail to reject the null hypothesis that means in other words we accept the null hypothesis that means there is no difference so if p value is more than 0.05 we accept the null hypothesis that there is no significant difference that is it is not significant and if p value is less than or equal to alpha level that is less than 0.05 we have to reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative hypothesis so if p value is less than 0.05 we have to reject the null hypothesis that means null hypothesis is no difference so we have to reject that that means there is significant difference so p value is less than 0.05 that means there is significant difference okay uh this type 1 error and type 2 error i think uh, just in the previous session this was discussed okay type 1 error and type 2 error we, so we won't go in detail of this okay so type just remember type 1 error is rejecting the null hypothesis when it is true okay and type 2 error is accepting the null hypothesis when it is false okay So just two sentences you can remember what is type one and what is type two error. Okay, I think rest of the thing in the previous lecture this was discussed type one and type two error. Now, if you want to generalize the findings of our study, we must know how reliable is our study, right? If there are some studies that we find findings, we have to make the generalized statement from that. 
राइट सैंपल कलेक्ट किया डेटा कलेक्ट किया कुछ फाइंडिंग्स मिला देन वी हैव टू जनरलाइज बट फॉर दैट आवर स्टडी शुड बी रिलायबल एंड दिस रिलायबिलिटी इज गिवन बाय स्टैंडर्ड एरर यू हर्ड ऑफ दिस स्टैंडर्ड एरर स्टैंडर्ड डेविएशन यू हैव लर्न इन द मॉर्निंग सेशन राइट वॉट इज स्टैंडर्ड डेविएशन One standard plus minus one standard, two standard deviation. Like mean is there, and whatever the value that is given to us, how that value differs from the mean, how it deviates from the mean. That is standard deviation. Likewise, for the reliability of your study, there is something called as standard error. Now, what is this standard error? Abi, one sample we have taken population. Se le liya. Obviously, that is not the exact similar to the entire population. राइट ओके पचास हजार पॉपुलेशन है एंड यू टेक 500 पीपल फ्रॉम दैट दे विल नॉट बी एक्जैक्टली सिमिलर टू द एंटायर पॉपुलेशन राइट यू टेक 500 फॉर योर स्टडी ओके वंस वन सैंपल हो गया इफ समवन टेक्स अनदर 500 अगेन दैट विल नॉट बी द सेम एज एंटायर पॉपुलेशन अगेन दैट विल नॉट बी द सैंपल दैट प्रीवियसली द अनदर सैंपल दैट वी हैव ड्रॉन बोथ द सैंपल्स विल आल्सो बी डिफरेंट स्लाइटली डिफरेंट नॉट एक्जैक्टली द सेम राइट The variation अभी एक सैंपल लिया सपोज फाइव हंड्रेड पीपल है उस सैंपल में वी कैलकुलेट द मीन हाइट ऑफ दोस फाइव हंड्रेड पीपल ओके दूसरा सैंपल लिया फाइव हंड्रेड पीपल का वी कैलकुलेटेड द मीन ऑफ मीन हाइट ऑफ दोज पीपल अगेन देर विल बी स्लाइट डिफरेंस दे विल नॉट एक्जैक्टली द सेम नॉट एक्जैक्टली द सेम एज पॉपुलेशन मीन ओके सो दिस वेरिएशन अमॉन्ग द सैंपल मीन्स ये जो सैंपल्स हम ड्रॉ कर रहे हैं उसके मीन में जो डिफरेंस आएगा दैट मीन इज रेफर्ड एज सैंपलिंग एरर ओके नाउ सपोज दिस येलो सर्कस सर्कल नॉट सर्कल ओवल सो दिस इज द एंटायर पॉपुलेशन ओके एंड इफ यू कैन सी दिस येलो लाइन हियर इट्स नॉट विजिबल एज सच बट दिस इज द पॉपुलेशन मीन ओके फ्रॉम द सेंटर This is the population mean, and all these small green green dots you are uh, seeing, they are all samples drawn from the population. Har ek sample ka mean agar tum plot karoge, so is line pe alag alag jagah pe aayega this sample mean. Okay, and these sample means if you plot on a line, it will resemble like a normal distribution curve. Okay, it will also form a normal distribution curve like we have seen for one sample. एक सैंपल के लिए होगा मीन एंड अदर वैल्यू बट अगर सैंपल मींस अगर प्लॉट करो देन अगेन देर विल बी दिस स्टैंडर्ड डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन कर सो दिस विल बी वेरिएशन अमॉन्ग द सैंपल मींस यार ये तो ज्यादा ही होगा ना वी आर टॉकिंग ऑन द फोन इमरजेंसी इमरजेंसी Emergency, obviously emergency, yeah. Hey na, without emergency, we will pick up the phone. Emergency, nipta ke aajo, please. So this variation among the sample means relative to the population mean. Population mean ke around all these sample means are there. They will form a normal curve. So this standard deviation of the sample mean. okay sample means ka standard deviation is called as standard error of the mean and sampling error is a fact of life when you some sampling error is going to be there it is not whatever the sample we draw it is not the exact replica of the entire population so some sampling error is going to be there but smaller the standard error smaller will be this sampling error okay how it is calculated it is not visible so uh 
this is for this, uh, how this standard error is calculated from quantitative variable for the quantitative variable standard error is standard deviation divided by square root of n n is the sample size and for qualitative data it is the proportion p into 1 minus p divided by n and if the sample size is less than 30 denominator is taken as n minus 1 okay so this is how you uh, calculate the standard error okay so this standard error it helps us to estimate the probable amount of error around a quantitative assertion that is confidence limit agar aapne koi bhi jan article padha so there is sometimes it is mentioned as odds ratio and there is a range given in the bracket so how to interpret from that data so that is confidence limits and perform the statistical test so this what is this confidence interval so it shows variability of the means okay how the mean is variable mean plus minus 2 or 1 point generally 2 it is taken or 1.96 to be precise standard error this estimates the range in which this 95 percent of the means of these repeated samples will occur same the sample means ka jo standard deviation standard normal curve hai, okay same thing mean plus minus two standard deviations that will all most of the uh, sample means will fall into that and this confidence interval is used to determine whether a mean or proportion differs from a fixed value that is population mean how much it differs from the population mean so generally the odds ratio if you see any article there is odds ratio with 95 percent confidence interval is given so if that interval if that range if it contains one it would not be statistically significant agar us range mein one nahi it hai so it would not be statistically different if it contains one that means it is that if one does not fall then it would not be statistically different one nahi aana chahiye then it will be statistically different i will just give you one example so here you can see this is the odds ratio so 0.81 but the range is 0.8 to 0.9 so it does not contain one point eight to point nine so it does not contain one that means it is significant so if you see here this value range is point nine to one point one point nine to one point one so this contains this range contains one so if it contains one not significant if it does not contain one then it is significant so whenever you see any journal article or such table okay and if you see the this uh, confidence interval so if it does not contain one it is significant if it contains one it is not significant okay so that is what you have to remember and finally now there are n number of statistical tests are available okay now obviously we don't have to manually calculate this test nobody does okay these calculations okay everything now softwares are available for all these statistical tests what we have to know is mera jo mere jo variables hai mera jo data hai uske liye which statistical test is appropriate at least humko utna pata hona chahiye baki calculations kaise hota hai koi bhi statisticians aapko software se wo apply karke de dega but you should know ki mai jo statistical test jo apply ki hai ek to kaun si lagani chahiye ya fir jo bhi lagai hai whether it is appropriate or not at least that much you should know and this will depend on the what type of variable that you have which two variables that you are comparing now there are two types of uh, analysis one is bivariate analysis and one is multivariate analysis bivariate means jab only two variables are there you have to compare two variables while the multivariate when there are multiple variables are there so first simple is bivariate so we'll see what are the different tests applicable for this bivariate analysis okay so first variable second variable just the one example and what will the appropriate test so if your first variable is continuous i hope you are aware now that what is continuous variable okay and second variable is also continuous both are continuous say so for example age and systolic blood pressure okay both are numbers so the test statistical test here will be pearson correlation coefficient okay or linear regression if both are continuous pearson correlation coefficient 
if first one is continuous and second is ordinal say for example age and satisfaction satisfaction like say par, uh, partially satisfied satisfied highly satisfied like order is there okay so in that case there will be you have to group the continuous variable and calculate spearman correlation coefficient so again here will be correlation but spearman correlation coefficient then if first variable is continuous and second is dichotomous but unpaired dichotomous means only two means like say for example gender male female but they are unpaired both groups are different so systolic blood pressure in males and females that you have to compare you have to apply student t test or unpaired t test you have to compare the blood pressure in males and females if first is continuous and second is dichotomous paired paired means here this ha huh, yes same sample before and after say difference in systolic blood pressure before versus after treatment so if you give some medication so first you measure the blood pressure in the same people you give a anti hypertensive tablet and then again you measure the blood pressure so same so that's why it's called a dichotomous paired before and after so here paired t test will be applied then continuous and second one is nominal that means not only male female but different groups say blood type hemoglobin level is a continuous and blood type a a b b o four groups are there so this is nominal variable so here you apply anova test okay then if first is ordinal second is also ordinal both are ordinal say satisfaction and severity of illness mild moderate severe so here you apply spearman correlation coefficient or kendall correlation coefficient if first is ordinal second is dichotomous unpaired like satisfaction level in males and females here man whitney u test if first is ordinal second is dichotomous paired like satisfaction level before and after a program okay. so that is wilcoxon matched pair sign rank test if first is ordinal second is nominal satisfaction level in different ethnic groups crescal valis test if first is dichotomous and second one is dichotomous unpaired like success and failure in treated and untreated groups two different groups so both are dichotomous then chi square test it will be like a 2 by 2 table will be formed here one is dichotomous dichotomous paired that is change in success failure before and after same group but dichotomous variable here macnamar just this is a modification of chi square test macnamar chi square test one is dichotomous second is nominal again here it will be chi square test in first one there will be 2 by 2 table here it will be 2 by 4 or 2 by 3 something like that like success failure in blood type if you take a ab o and b so it will be 2 by 4 table and you have to apply chi square test nominal both are nominal again it will be chi square test but it will be n by n table 4 by 4 can be 4 by 3 whatever now this is for the when two variables are there okay at least these many names you should uh, remember or have with you when you are like analyzing the data so that you should know like which test should, should be applied so this is for the uh, this is bivariate analysis and the multivariate where multiple uh, variables are there like one dependent variable is continuous and other are categorical then you have to uh, ancoa that is analysis of variance anova and if dependent variable is continuous and independent like some are categorical some are continuous then again it is ancoa analysis of covariance continuous multiple variables are there then multiple linear regression okay this independent variables are multiple variables not a single one if dependent is ordinal and independent can be anything so there is no formal multivariable procedure either you treat the variables as if they are continuous and then perform the log linear analysis if dependent variable is dichotomous and all other independent are categorical then logistic regression so mostly this is regression analysis which is used dichotomous some categorical some continuous then logistic regression if dependent is dichotomous rest all are continuous then again logistic regression or discriminant function analysis nominal and all other are categorical then log linear analysis nominal then some categorical some continuous then you have to group the continuous variable and then perform the log linear analysis 
one is nominal all other are continuous then again discriminant function analysis or you have to group the continuous variable and then perform the log linear analysis so multiple multivariate analysis is slightly difficult mostly it is a regression analysis okay have this data with you but at least bivariate jo hai that you should know that there are the simple tests what is the use of this inferential statistics if you don't apply appropriate statistical test most of the journals they will not accept your data because you have to draw some conclusion then it is test this allows you to generalize your findings to a larger population okay unless that you cannot generalize the findings if you don't apply appropriate statistical test then this statistical test is help you to test the hypothesis to determine whether the observed difference is real or it is because of chance that means to accept or reject the null hypothesis for that purpose this statistical tests are useful and it also helps to assess the strength of relationship between independent that is causal variable and dependent that is effective how strongly they are correlated okay that are the uses of inferential statistics so just uh, one example one two example so this is one example a clinical psychologist was asked to determine whether there was a clear difference in the length of stay of patients so this length of stay in terms of number of days okay with different categories of disorders in a mental hospital that is three diagnostic categories are there affective disorder cognitive disorder and drug related conditions so which statistical test that you will apply two variables are there one is this uh, three different uh, conditions psychiatric conditions and length of stay of patients hmm unpaired t test unpaired t test is when only there are two groups anova because there are three categories agar yahan pe do categories hoti to unpaired t test but there are three uh, diagnostic categories so anova second example comparison of effect of fentanyl against codeine in general anesthesia so the parameters that you have to compare time for induction pulse systolic and diastolic blood pressure and saturation so if both the groups are independent like in one group you have 26 samples uh, in another group again 26 so how will you compare all these different parameters all these are continuous parameters actually so if one group is given fentanyl another group is given codeine so two groups are there one is group is given fentanyl another group is given codeine and then you have to test the pulse one will take one variable only pulse rate so to compare the pulse rate in the one group in which you are given fentanyl and another group you are given codeine which test pet test it will be unpaired t test two groups are different right only in two groups one group this may fentanyl is there second group this may fortin then you have to compare the pulse rate one is variable is continuous another one is dichotomous and this is third again two groups are there surgery for hypospadias without cordy repair snort plus grass procedure and the second procedure is decades procedure so independent variable is the individual procedure dependent variable is failure rate so whether it is a success or failure how this failure is cat, uh, determined based on this score so two procedures chi square test because two procedures this uh, without uh, snort plus grass and ducats and other two categories are failure and success so two by two table will be there this other information is required just to whether it is a failure or success uske liye hai okay so that will be two by two table and you have to apply chi square test okay so this is about different uh, statistical test how to interpret from that and what is the use of this inferential statistic okay any questions thank you now for the uh, for the next session 
Uh, I would like to invite uh, again Dr. Shubha Outset, ma'am. She is professor in the Department of Community Medicine, and she will be talking on experimental studies. Uh, always use this randomized controlled trial, which is nothing but the experimental epidemiology. Up till now, you have uh, learned about this uh, case control study, cohort study, descriptive study, situational studies, and this is the experimental study where we are going to do some intervention or experiment. So. Uh, at the end of session, you will know about the various characteristics of epidemiology, uh, experimental studies, what are the various steps which are mandatory for randomized control trial, what is the importance of blinding, and various types of experimental studies. So the important characteristics of experimental studies, here the, we do the interventions. And all the interventions and study, both are under the direct control of investigator. Intervention or experimentation involves attempting any change in the variable. We may change one variable or we may change more than one variable. So it is again under the control of investigator. And the effect is measured by comparing the outcome with experimental group with that of control group. In this type of study, experimental studies, ethical considerations are very much important because we are going to do some intervention. So it may have harmful effects. So for that matter, ethical considerations are very, very important. And randomization is the heart of major, uh, experimental studies. There are two types of experimental studies, animal studies and human studies. Animal studies are mainly utilized for uh, studying the natural history of disease by reproducing the disease in the animals. We can uh, see the hypo, uh, uh, etiological hypothesis or we can study the pathophysiology of particular disease by uh, uh, these animal studies. And we can use these animal studies for evaluation of any new drug, new treatment, new vaccine. For that also, animal studies are important. So first animal study was conducted by Louis Pasteur in 1881 for when he derived his anthrax vaccine. He conducted this animal study. He made two groups of sheep. One group of sheep uh, received the anthrax vaccine while another group doesn't receive. And then he inoculated anthrax bacilli in both the groups. The group who, which received the vaccine, that was uh, that group was healthy. And while the another group which doesn't receive the vaccine, that was the critical on some of the animals died also. Human experiments are equally important because every time you cannot reproduce human disease in an animal group. And secondly, every finding of animal study cannot be applied for the human study. That's why human experiments are very, very important. So first human experimental study was conducted by James Lind in 1753. At that time, scurvy was very much common among the sailors. So he made uh, six pairs of sailors and he gave different, uh, for one group he gave uh, vinegar, another group he gave 
CDAR uh, for third group, he gave elixir vitriol, and one group received orange and lemon. So the group which received orange and lemon, that group was recovered from scurvy after the one week. So this was the first clinical trial conducted by James Lind in 1753. Now types of human experimental study, there are two types, randomized and non-randomized trial. In randomized control trial, it may be preventive trial, it may be therapeutic trial, clinical trial, risk factor trial, or physician experiment. While non-randomized trials are before and after experiment, uncontrolled trials, or natural experiments. So randomized control trial is very, very important scientific technique, and it is mainly used to evaluate treatment or prevention. So since the time of invention, this randomized control trial has been used for testing the efficacy of oral hypoglycemic drug, testing the efficacy of stripping in varicose veins, testing the efficacy of tonsillectomy. So you can test efficacy of vaccine, drug, or any procedure with the help of this randomized control trial. So in, while doing your dissertation, you may choose a therapy or your new procedure and you want to test its efficacy by comparing it with the conventional one. And for that matter, you have to uh, adopt this randomized control uh, study design. So what are the steps of randomized control trial? First is you have to draw the protocol, then select reference and experimental population, then do randomization, then manipulation or intervention, and then you have to assess the outcome. So this is a flow chart of a randomized control trial. First, you have to select a suitable population, which is called as reference population. And reference population is one to which you are applying your results. For example, if you are uh, testing the efficacy of drug for uh, treatment of anemia among pregnant ladies, then pregnant ladies having anemia will be your reference population. Out of that reference population, you will select a suitable sample. So that is the actual population which will be participating in your study and that is called as experimental or study population. Then third step is you have to make the necessary exclusions. Means those who are not eligible. Suppose you want to test a drug for treatment of anemia among pregnant women. Then if the woman is not anemic, so she is not eligible for your study. So the pregnant woman who is anemic she will be the included in your study. So you make necessary exclusions, means those who are not eligible and those who are not wish to participate because we are giving some intervention and that's why informed consent and willingness of the participant is very, very important. Then the next step is you have to randomize the group into study group and control group, then do some manipulation and then follow up of that particular outcome. So in the randomized control trial, which is may, what is may, uh, most important is protocol. First, you have to draw the protocol for you. Before proceeding for the study, you have to design the protocol. And what protocol will include? Protocol will include your aims and objectives. It will include what manipulation or what intervention you are going to do, standardization of that treatment, how you do randomization, whether you use the randomization by tossing the coin or by using random uh, numbers, then whether the intervention is likely to give some side effects, what compensation you are going to give, what is the type of informed consent you are uh, getting from the participants, everything should be included in the protocol. So protocol is very, very important in randomized control trial. Then you have to select the reference population and experimental or study population, as I have told. The next step is very important is inclusion criteria and exclusion criteria. While writing the methodology in your research, you have to mention the inclusion criteria and exclusion criteria. So what do you mean by inclusion criteria? So inclusion criteria means which study participants you are going to include. So they should be representative of the sample. For same example, study of uh, treatment of anemia among pregnant ladies. If the pregnant ladies, they should be uh, study population you are selecting, they should represent the reference population. Means economically or culturally, they should resemble to the study population. Secondly, they should be eligible or qualified for the study. 
and third very very important thing is they must give the informed consent here the word is informed consent not only consent it is informed consent it means you have to explain your study objective you have to explain what intervention you are going to do and after giving this information to the participant if they are ready to participate they should it is called as informed consent so you have to take the informed consent so what will be the exclusion criteria obviously those who are not ready to participate that is the first exclusion criteria then many of the times whenever you are doing some clinical trial for drugs unless it is necessary pregnancy and lactation these are the exclusion criteria then women in reproductive age who are not using contraceptive for such group you should not use as a clinical trial for new drug and extremes of the age these are the exclusion criteria in general the next step is randomization we will say that randomization is the heart of randomized control trial it is done to attain the eliminate the bias why we do randomization to eliminate bias what is actual randomization it is a statistical procedure by which the participants are allocated into two groups one is study group and second is control group so study group will receive intervention while control group will not receive the intervention so this process of allocation is known as randomization now what is the necessity of randomization why to do randomization randomization is the best way to prove the efficacy of new drug or new intervention because it ensures that by randomization all groups will be similar as possible and secondly it will eliminate con confounding bias and it will eliminate the selection bias randomization can be done by tossing the coin or it can be done by random number table uh, you have learned about the analytical studies like case control study and cohort study so there are also two groups in randomization randomized control trial there are also two groups and in analytical studies there are also two groups so what is the main difference in analytical studies these two groups are already formed for example if you are conducting a study for the smokers and lung cancer the smoker and non smoker these groups are already formed or in case control study cases and control they are already formed while in randomized control trial by means of randomization we are forming the group they are not already formed we are forming the group by doing randomization so this is the main difference between rct and analytical studies then next you will do some intervention or manipulation so it is not all the time that intervention means giving a drug or giving a vaccine you can give the intervention by means of health education suppose you are doing a study for obesity and ischemic heart disease for one group you will give some workout or exercises and another group they will continue their sedentary lifestyle so giving the work uh, health education that about doing some exercise this, this may serve as a intervention so intervention is not necessary that it should be a drug it should be a therapy or it should be a vaccine it may be a just change in lifestyle it may serve as a intervention then you have to follow up by doing follow up how the outcomes will change and then assess the outcome so the outcome may be positive or negative means after giving the drug or after giving the intervention there may be beneficial effect for the population or sometimes it may give negative results if your new drug is not much giving efficient results so there may be some side effects there may be complication or worsening of the condition so assessment may give positive results as well as negative results so what is bias bias is an systematic error for every type of study there is some systematic error so there may be errors in the assessment so bias may be part for the participant if the participant knows that i am taking this new drug then he he may be subjectively feel that yes i am okay i am getting benefits or i am getting free from the symptoms so this is a subject variation sometimes there may be observers bias suppose you know that this group i have given the new drug and this group is receiving the placebo then definitely there may be some subjective variation from your side observer side that yes this group is getting some benefits so that is observers bias third is bias in evaluation the person who is evaluating the outcome 
there may be bias if he knows that this group is study group and receiving the drug and another group is receiving just placebo so this type of a bias can be eliminated by blinding so it is called as blinding so it may be a single blind trial single blind trial means participant doesn't know whether i am taking the actual drug or whether i am taking a placebo double blind trial here the participant as well as investigator both are not knowing that whether actually they are taking a drug or placebo and triple blind trial here the participant investigator and the person who is analyzing the data all three are not knowing which group is study and which group is control group so this is known as triple binding ideally we should use the triple blinding type of trial but for uh, convention for convenience purpose double blind trial is the most popularly used type of trial now there are two types of study designs of randomized control trial one is concurrent parallel and second is crossover so concurrent parallel here randomly you will select study group and control group one group will be exposed to a treatment and another group is not exposed to treatment then the same group you have to follow up and assess the outcome so this is a parallel type of study design the another type is crossover type of study design here again there are two groups one will one group will receive the intervention second group will not receive the intervention after some time you assess the outcome and then crossover means the group which has received the new drug now they will receive the placebo and another group which is not received the drug prior they will receive the drug so just crossing of the group so this is known as crossover type of study design there are certain advantages of crossover type of study design every participant will get the opportunity to test the new drug so every participant will be involved so that is one advantage here the person will sir has his own control but there are certain side effect or uh, disadvantages of crossover type of study design now what are the various types of randomized control trial it may be a clinical trial it may be a preventive trial conducted for vaccines or for chemo prophylaxis it may be a risk factor trial risk factor trial is done for studying the what is the influence of particular risk factor on the development of the disease for example smoking so smoking is related to hypertension ischemic heart disease lung cancer so whether it is really uh, it has a role in development of disease that can be tested with the help of randomized control trial it can be trial for etiological agent or it can be done for evaluation of health services so first important is clinical trial it is usually designed to assess the efficacy of prophylaxis diagnostic procedure or for therapeutic agents there are four phases of clinical trial phase 1 this study is done on certain human volunteers maybe up to 50 sample size is less it is done on healthy volunteers and it is of course non randomized trial in phase 2 clinical trial it is done against small number of patients up to 100 to 500 patients here we are testing the dose frequency and side effects of a particular drug then phase 3 trial it is usually the randomized double blind control trial and it is usually done to test the efficacy of particular disease uh, disease uh, treatment or efficacy of vaccine or efficacy of surgical procedure here the sample size may be 1000 or more than 1000 and phase 4 clinical trial it is usually post marketing for any drug before it comes into market it has to undergo this clinical for all three phases of clinical trial so after phase 3 is successful that drug can be uh, sold in the market and it will be approved by the fda but sometimes in post uh, phase 4 post marketing experience may not be good for example certain drugs are withdrawn from the market nimazolide previously it was used for the uh, pediatric treatment but after post marketing it was found that there are certain side effects in pediatric patient so nowadays nimazolide is not used for the uh, pediatric patient so it is a post marketing clinical trial second type of trial is a preventive trial here we are testing some vaccines or some 
chemo prophylactic drugs so when such type of trials are done it is known as preventive trial third type of rct is risk factor trial as i have told whether the single factor or multiple factors may be responsible for development of particular disease so for that also the risk factor trial is done trial of etiological agent the best known example is retrolental fibroplasia previously for premature infants they used to give hyperbaric oxygen high concentration oxygen and they found that the uh, infants who received this high uh, highly concentrated oxygen they develop some retrolental fibroplasia so this was a this trial is a etiological agent so here the oxygen is responsible for the development of retrolental fibroplasia so that is a etiological trial next is cessation experiment in this type of randomized control trial one group will continue for uh, i have given the example smoking and lung cancer so for one group they will uh, stop smoking and another group they will continue the smoking and what will be the change in the outcome so that is called as cessation experiment so that is nothing but the randomized control trial then randomized control trial can be used for evaluation of health services also in pre previously they used to admit the tuberculosis patients in the tb sanatoriums for uh, and they used to give the indole treatment for these tb uh, patients but after conducting the randomized control trial they found that domiciliary treatment is equally important so even the tb patient can be treated by in, uh, there is no need to admit the patient in the hospital and you can give the directly observed treatment or domiciliary treatment and it is equally effective and it is also cost effective also so randomized control trial can be used to evaluate the health services also previously there was rntcp revised national tuberculosis control program in which they used to give the dots treatment on alternate day after conducting this rct they found that alternate day treatment is not effective and there is risk of increasing mdr tb multi drug resistant tb and now they uh, they are giving this dots treatment daily so this evaluation of health services can be done with the help of rct so suppose you want to uh, do a research uh, on a surgical procedure or a vaccine or a drug how will you go forward or how will you do this research so i have elaborated it with one example for example a new vaccine has been developed say example for uh, covid vaccine within 8 to 9 months covid vaccine was available and it was tested so whether the, before coming this vaccine in the market before applying uh, giving this vaccine to the entire group it has undergone the rct so first step is what they have to develop a protocol so in protocol they will mention the objective that whether this uh, vaccine is immunogen it has immunogenicity what may be the side effects of the vaccine and who will be the study participants what will be the process of randomization so that protocol is developed then next they have to decide the reference population and study population for which this vaccine will be helpful thirdly they will find a group of healthy volunteers and they will conduct the phase 1 clinical trial after testing the safety first important thing is whether this is safety or it is harmful so in phase 1 they have tested that phase 2 they have uh, tested the vaccine dose schedule on the large number of people may 500 up to 500 and then third group is the phase 3 clinical trial which is a double blind randomized control trial here they will uh, assign two groups by means of tossing the time uh, coin or by means of using the random number table they formulated two group one is study group and one is control group study group they have given the vaccine while control group they will receive the placebo of course it is a double blind trial so participant as well as investigator was not knowing which is the study group and which is the control group and after few time they will test the immunogenicity safety and efficacy of the vaccine by doing the follow up and then use the statistical methods as sir has told the test of significance or various multivariate univariate analysis you can use whether it is really helpful or not so this is how you have to conduct the randomized controlled trial 
So what are the advantages and disadvantages of RCT? Advantages, it is the only effective method to control the selection bias. Here we are doing randomization. You are not deliberately selecting patient. For example, if you are taking a, a trial for a drug for a treatment of anemia, and if you deliberately select the person having mild anemia, and second group is having moderate anemia. Mild anemia, you will give the drug, and for moderate anemia, you will give the placebo. The result has to be significant because the persons who are receiving the drug, they are having mild anemia. While moderate anemia, they are receiving placebo. So the drug outcome is according to your favor. So it is called as selection bias. This selection bias is minimized because of randomization. Here, you are randomly assigned two groups. So some persons may be having mild anemia, some persons may be having moderate anemia. So here, selection bias is minimized. Secondly, confounding bias is also minimized by randomized control trial. Effective blinding is available. So double blind trial is available. So bias is observer's bias, sub uh, subjective variation, everything will be minimized. But there are certain disadvantages for RCTs. It is very complex and expensive and ethical considerations are very, very important. And that may be a problem for conducting a RCT. The another type of trial is non-randomized trial. Here, three types are there, uncontrolled trials. Here, there are no comparison groups. The example is efficacy of pap smear test. Pap smear is done. Nowadays, it is advised for all women above 35 years in order to diagnose the cervical cancer at earlier stage. So this efficacy of pap smear test, it was tested by uncontrolled trial. There was no randomization, but still it is effective. Second type of non-randomized trial is natural experiments where the epidemiological epidemiologists take the advantage of natural separation. For example, if you are testing the evidence of lung cancer on smoker and non-smoker. So naturally there are two groups, smokers and non-smokers. So that is natural experiment. And third is before and after comparison study. This type of, these are the three types of non-randomized control trials. Thank you very much. If you have any difficulty regarding RCT or experimental study, you can ask. I know today you are hypoglycemy. Yesterday you were hyperglycemy. So <laughs> I have tried experiment on both types. Any difficulty regarding RCT or experimental study?